be in place in such a short time frame and said the government's authority to compel participation remained unclear. Fox said the registration effort would not delay the FAA's goal of publishing rules for commercial drone use by next June. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Clark County paramedics responded to a frantic 911 call from a nearby motel this morning where the Lord our God, a divine creator and ruler of the universe, had been found nude and unconscious following his latest suicide attempt. God, whose sources say had recently grown far more depressed and withdrawn from humanity than usual, reportedly attempted to hang himself from the base of his motel showerhead after ingesting an unknown quantity of Ambien. Motel sources claim that God's room had been left in a state of disarray and revealed that they had found a brief note written by the omnipotent deity, saying that the suicide stems from long periods of unhappiness he had been suffering in recent millennia, including the death of his only child, thousands of years of war and genocide, chronic weight gain, and the aftermath of his messy 15,088 BC divorce. Paramedics say the supreme being had no pulse when they arrived. The Lord's overdose comes in the wake of several widely publicized previous suicide attempts, including a 1985 incident when the Lord leapt from the Grand Canyon but changed into a bird at the last second and flew to safety. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. You can join us here. We'll give you our toll-free number as well as the Skype here in moments in the studio tonight. You've got me, Ian. And Conan. And Mark. And uh, there's some pretty shocking news, at least for those of you out there who still believe government politicians when they tell you things, especially when it's they tell uh, when they're telling you things about war. Because all of a sudden, when politicians who most people kind of know are liars— I think that's pretty common knowledge, isn't it? That is the yeah, that's common. Yeah. It, I mean, it, truth is the first casualty of war is uh, the old quote. But yet, when the war claims start coming out, whether it's yellow cake or you know torture or whatever it is that the bad guys are supposedly doing, uh, then people just kind of put it all aside, all of their distrust of politicians, and just get shoved aside because the nation is in jeopardy. There's someone out there, a boogeyman who is dangerous. They're hurting people. They're you know threatening the United States, and something needs to be done about it. People and, and you don't isn't and you don't mess with the military. I mean, they are there to protect you. They're like firefighters and teachers. I mean, they are the the top the of the guys. pyramid. They're the good guys. So I mean, if you if you start naysaying what they're all about, then you. I mean, even if it's the guys up at the top that are making these decisions. I guess people can't distinguish the two. They can't say, that hey, there are good military guys out there, and then there are a bunch of puppet masters that are pulling the strings and making these decisions because, uh, you know, they're in bed with, uh, the, you know, the military-industrial complex and these right. big oil companies and these, and these poppy, poppy, these pharmaceutical companies, and they just can't, they can't distinguish the two. I mean, you got to really sit down and put them in two separate camps. So you, you don't need to, um, you, you know, you don't... I'm sorry. It's it's. <laughs> well, you were a veteran, and I understand why you get uh, you know wrapped up um, in this. I, I I wonder to myself who besides a peace activist cares so much about uh, military men. I mean, it seems like I'm sure their families care about them. I why do they support the military adventurism so much? Who the families? Yes, it's They're all it's to. all about the intervention. It's uh, it's all about keeping the uh, potential enemies from ever. Uh, you know, making making gains yeah, in the world. They're told they're it, like doing taking good another work. building down. They're told they're doing good work. They're trying to you know keep the world safe for democracy. I I guess so. Um, Protecting I'm, freedom, you know. Here's what I wonder: because we're all so much freer now yeah. after all these wars. I I wonder to myself what the because America and many and much of the world really sort of figured out what war is about in World War One. They realized, huh. This was a big waste of time where we all died for a bunch of, uh, you know, overlords' whims. And the, you know, there was there was a period of time there where there wasn't much war for a couple of decades. Mm -hmm. And then they got better at sort of hiding um, why it was that they went to war. Obviously, a huge boogeyman in Hitler. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know why it's great that Stalin won World War II, but, you know, nonetheless— and because of World War II, which of course is a direct result of the existence of World War I, uh, you know, war became good again. 
It's, it was a good thing because we went in and we saved the Jews. Of course, it's really important to, um, to, to, to consider that mm, you might be able to, to lay the death of the Jews at the hands of pretty much any Western country around. Um, so I, I recently heard a story uh, from a Quaker that uh, I'm very familiar with. I go and visit him in the um, nursing home once a week, and he was telling me a story about uh, some Quakers. Uh, Isn't he a World War II vet, that guy? He is a World War II vet, yeah, yeah um, but he wasn't a Quaker at the time. Um, Henry Cadbury, uh, Rufus Jones, and some other uh, Quaker businessmen went to Nazi Germany right after Kristallnacht um, in order to see if they needed to start up the Quaker feeding program that they had had in place uh, for a couple of years after World War One with all the devastated farmland. Um, in that, uh, you know, they had the conversation with the Nazis. The Nazis left the room. Um, you know, the conversation was, hey, what do we need to do here? The Nazis listened in on their conversation. These guys, being Quakers, they decided to have silent worship, um, so there was no conversation to listen <laughs> on. Um, the Nazis agreed. Listen to me. The Nazis agreed that um, the Quakers could begin uh, relocating mm. the Jews. Listen to me. This is really important. Then... The Quakers basically weren't able to get anywhere with the United States government. The voyage of the damned, right? Well, the, the ship of the damned is certainly a great example that one can look up historically, but it's conceivable that the United States government could have taken all of those Jews that uh, the, sure. the Nazis put in work camps. They wanted to get rid of them. First. Yes. And then when they couldn't get rid of them, they got rid of them yeah. by killing. Now, I'm not going to say that uh, the, the crime of the United States government is as high as that of the crime of uh, Nazi Germany. But if you believe in sins of omission, and many people do, that's a pretty big sin of omission that caused millions of people to die. Mm. Right? Well, I mean, it didn't directly cause it, but uh, it certainly could be argued that had they allowed people I just in, said it was a sin right. of omission. I made it uh, – there's no – you can't – a sin of omission wouldn't be direct. Okay. I think it's going to be very curious to see what's happened because we have refugees floating around in Europe right now, Syrian yep. refugees, and they're they are they got nowhere to go. They got no nowhere to nothing to eat, uh, and it's it's well, just, and winter is coming. They just stormed the border, one of the borders. Um, I have to look into it hmm. a little uh, more thoroughly, but uh, but you know, I just read the story that they're they're storming the border yeah, to take, get across. Take a look into that. Our toll free number tonight, if you want to join us here, is eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. So apparently uh, someone's been digging through these emails, the Hillary Clinton email scandal that uh, you've probably heard something about. It's been making a lot of headlines. Well, guess what? Within the Hillary Clinton emails, there are apparently emails regarding Tony Blair and George W. Bush, uh, particularly an email from, I think it was Colin Powell, about the, uh, the Iraq War. And according to the Daily Mail... It actually shows that the former prime minister, that's uh, Tony Blair, his support for the war at a summit with the U.S. president in 2002. The bombshell document shows Blair preparing to act as a spin doctor for Bush, who was told that the U.K. will follow our lead. Publicly, Blair still claimed to be looking for a diplomatic solution in direct contrast to the email revelation. So publicly, they weren't talking about going to war, but privately, a year in advance of the actual kickoff of said war... They were talking about doing that, just th just that thing. So what they were saying publicly was not in point of fact what they were actually saying privately about going to war. These people wanted to go to war. They were premeditating going into war. And that's some of what these emails show. We'll get into the detail on it here. David is on the line first, though, in California. You're on Free Talk Live, David, with Ian Conan and Mark. Hey, greetings. Hi. Yeah, I, uh, I'm glad you're talking about this. Uh, you know, we... Uh, I, you have you all ever interviewed Webster Tarpley? No, I recognize the name. The name sounds familiar. Who is that? Well, he's also uh, got a show on um, on uh, uh, Good Grief here on on uh, GCN, and uh, he's also got a. I think his show is on Saturday afternoon. Webster Tarpley wrote a book about the Bush family. Uh, it, his his first book or his most famous one is called George Bush: The Unauthorized biography, and it was written about the dad. But it goes into a lot of history, you know, family history, all the way back uh, like 125 years to the Spanish-American War. And apparently, uh, you know, people have heard about uh, uh, Prescott Bush, but he, even Prescott's father was a war profiteer. Uh, he was a purchasing agent during the Spanish-American War, and those guys made so much money that it was a 
in their vested interest to have more wars. And so World War I, uh, Sam Bush got uh, uh, Prescott involved. And then, uh, I had come to think of it, I think Prescott was a little young for World War I, but uh, they then became uh, money launderers for, uh, for the, the Nazis. Or yeah, what, that's what I heard. World War One. Yeah, and <clears throat> basically uh, during World War One, after World War One, the big armaments manufacturers of Germany were supposed to pay back uh, reparations, pay back France and Belgium and Italy for invading them. They didn't want to do it, so they were looking for somebody to hide their money for them, uh, for them, and that's when. Uh, uh, Prescott and Sam Bush and uh, it got involved in, in doing this money laundering. And uh, so the, the whole, if you can see this book, uh, Webster Tarpley's got his own page. And you Thanks can for the heads the up, David. Appreciate hearing yeah. from you. These uh, This is a family. It's true that, that this family goes back generations. They've all uh, for a long time been connected to power. And uh, it's not a surprise that, hey, guess what? They yep. lied about going to war. War profiteering is in their genes, it seems. Yeah, 855 450 free. And there's another one running for president now. It's Free Talk Live. I walk my dog every day, and I've got the best looking dog in the neighborhood named Stanley. He's a collie mix. We meet the same people every day. I tell me, oh, he's so soft, and he's so silky. And these dogs that have the brittle hair, it's coarse. It doesn't lay nice, it's not shiny. It's I tell them about Dynavite. D-I-N-O-V-I-T-E dot com. 859-428-1000. The omega-3 fatty acids. Flaxseed, zinc, alfalfa. The digestive enzymes that are cooked out of regular dog food. Sundance's coat was shiny and glossy the way it had when she was a puppy. We get asked all the time, it shows. How do you get your dog so healthy and shiny and glossy? It didn't take very long. They've got their nice, expensive jogging suit on, and their dog has their smooth, beautiful, soft, shiny coat. So now their dog looks just as good as they do. 859-428-1000. 859-428-1000. Oh. dot com. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America. From where you shop, to the doctors you visit, and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. I know this sounds unbelievable, but at my house, we saved as much as 45% off of a new item on Amazon. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveitpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. 
There comes a time when you need custom embroidered or screen printed apparel for your business, organization, or a special event. Corporate Casuals has been helping people create great looking logoed apparel for over 25 years. They can produce a single piece or thousands using name brand apparel like Nike, Patagonia, Adidas, and Hanes. Create your logo in their online embroidery design studio or upload your existing logo and they'll turn it into embroidery. Go to corporatecasuals.com slash FTL and include FTL in the order notes and save 5% on your order. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You can join us right here. Our toll-free number for you is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We also have Skype. You can Skype into the show. Skype username is lrn.fm. Mark, you're going to be packing up uh, about a week from now, right, to head to Vegas? Yeah, it's the life of a you know important and famous radio host. I'm heading out to Vegas for a conference. Well, it's the Bitcoin Investor Conference. Should be a lot of fun. Um, we're going to have uh, Trace Mayer speaking there. Uh, Stephen Michaels is putting the event on. He'll be speaking, of course, as uh, will uh, Dr. S Stephanie Murphy, who you've heard here on the show. Brian Sovereign also. Bitcoin Bell, who is uh, Michelle Seven, she's been on the air with us. It's practically like a, a, it's like a reunion yeah, show, co-host reunion <laughs> at uh, the Bitcoin Investor Conference. There'll be lots of other great speakers. It's at the D Hotel in downtown Las Vegas uh, on October the 29th and 30th. Come out and see the show done live. I'll be emceeing and hanging around the event, so you can, we can uh, chit chat if that's what you want to do. Uh, just go to Bitcoin Investor. Dot com. They've extended the early bird pricing, so uh, you can still get tickets for $100. It's a great deal. Bitcoininvestor.com. Uh, I believe until tomorrow, we're still giving away uh, some tickets. So if you want to go to facebook.freetalklive.com, we've got pin, a contest pinned to the top there. And you can guess a number and perhaps win some tickets. Or you can buy them at bitcoininvestor.com. All right, so here's the big news from the Daily Mail. A bombshell White House memo has revealed for the first time details of the deal in blood forged by Tony Blair and George Bush over the Iraq War. The sensational leak shows that Blair had given an unqualified pledge to sign up to the conflict a year before the invasion started. Wow. So this was pretty premeditated here. It flies in the face of the prime minister's public claims at the time that he was seeking a diplomatic solution to the crisis. He had told voters, quote, we're not proposing military action. Well, I guess that's true. He was planning military <laughs> action instead of proposing it. In direct contrast to what the secret email now reveals. And they actually do have the memos here. So you, if you want to read the details, they're all here on the Daily Mail story. I'll put that link on our Facebook and Twitter here in a moment. The classified document, or previously classified, also discloses that Blair agreed to act as a glorified spin doctor for the president by presenting, quote, public affairs lines, unquote, to convince a skeptical public that Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction when none existed. In return, the president would flatter Blair's ego and give the impression that Britain was not America's poodle, but an equal partner in the, quote, special relationship unquote. Wow. The damning memo from Secretary of State Colin Powell to President George Bush was written on March 28, 2002, a week before George Bush's famous summit with Blair at his Crawford Ranch in Texas. Please don't tell me that Colin Powell was involved in this. In it. I like him so much. He's a politician, Mark. What do you like about he him? He was a general, um, not a politician. You don't get to be a general without being political. All I don't know. Period. All military officers are politicians right exactly take it for the guy who was in the military conan and, was there and the guys who did a good job and they were loved by the troops and they were they're always trying to keep them out of the harm's way and make good decisions usually didn't make it very far not past like what sergeant or lieutenant or something like no that? they'd usually get to about lieutenant colonel yeah yeah, I think that uh, but, after but Lieutenant full, full, boot, full board Colonel, no way, no after way. After Lieutenant Colonel, you have to be sort of approved by Congress, essentially, and uh, you know that, that gets it, the stakes have been raised. Yeah, you don't get up that level without being a, a, a politician. The same thing's true about you know police chiefs and people like that. Look, I, you know, you, you get your favorite. You watch the politicians long enough, you you pick your favorites, and I had a favorite. So yeah. what? 
Well, and if you watch politicians long enough, they'll all fall from grace. So here you go, Mark. Uh, in the memo from Powell, he tells Bush that Blair will, quote, be with us, unquote, on military action. Powell assures the president, quote, the U.K. will follow our lead, unquote. The disclosure is certain to lead for calls for Sir John Chilicott to reopen his inquiry into the Iraq war if, as believed, he has not seen the Powell memo. The second explosive memo from the same cache also reveals how Bush used spies in the British Labour Party to help him manipulate British public opinion in favor of the war. Hmm. The documents obtained by the Mail on Sunday are part of a batch of secret emails held on the private server of Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton, which U.S. courts have forced her to reveal. Wow. So, uh, you know, it's interesting. They, of course, the Republicans were... Uh, loving the fact that Hillary was in hot water over these emails, and now it's turning around to bite them in the butt a little bit here. And it's also revealing, and I think that uh, it's worth pointing out, that Hillary Clinton had this information, and she didn't do anything about it. <laughs> so, of course, it's it you know just points out that these Republicans and Democrats, they're in collusion in Washington, D.C. Does this mean when Bill Clinton said that he didn't know um, anything about aliens in Area 51 that he could have been lying to us, too? I, they can always be lying if their lips are moving. Just saying. The documents, I remember saying that. I was like, well, the president says there's nothing there. We're fine. Former Tory Shadow Home Secretary David Davis said, quote, the memos prove in explicit terms what many of us have believed all along. Tony Blair effectively agreed to act as a front man for American foreign policy in advance of any decision by the House of Commons or the British cabinet. He was happy to launder George Bush's policy on Iraq and subcontract British foreign policy to another country without having the remotest ability to have any real influence over it. And in return for what? For George Bush pretending Blair was a player on the world stage to impress voters in the UK when Americans didn't even believe it themselves. Davis was backed by a senior diplomat with close knowledge of Blair-Bush relations who said, quote, this memo shows beyond doubt for the first time Blair was committed to the Iraq war even before he set foot in Crawford, Texas. And it shows how the Americans plan to make Blair look like an equal partner in the so-called special relationship to bolster his position in the U.K. Uh, Blair's spokesman insisted last night that Powell's memo was, quote, consistent with what he was saying publicly at the time. <laughs> so once again, the uh, official position here from Blair's party or from his people, his spokesman, there's nothing that, to see here. This that hey, this isn't. This is pretty much consistent with what we was uh, what he was saying at the time. After all, he you know said that we're not proposing military action, which isn't a lie. I mean, that was the truth. They weren't proposing it. It had already been proposed. <laughs> they were in the midst of planning the military action. So you know, he just didn't tell you the whole truth. Which of course is what they do. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. I wish there was more to say about it. It just feels so, I guess, expected to some extent. Um, I, I'm a little surprised that they planned this ahead of time, so far ahead of time. A year before, out? Yeah, before 9-11, right? Uh, this is, the memo. If it's a no. year before Iraq, it's maybe 2002. Yeah, no, this was okay. after 9-11. Okay, so I mean, you know, essentially, 9/11 comes along. Seems like a good idea to finish up that whole Iraq thing, where uh, you know uh, George Bush Senior didn't take it far enough, didn't run all the way into Baghdad or whatever. And um, you know, it'll be a good solution. It'll be a good war, easy to fight, and um, it's a long time in coming. So that's what it sounds like. This uh, the the whole thought process was behind this. Yeah, if it if it wasn't already pre-planned before. Uh, I mean, right. like, like you said, his dad was already in there. I'm, I'm thinking they, they've always been planning. They've always, the warmongers are always trying to get their foot into something. Always something. Always. I mean, so 9/11 was a good opportunity to get to, to go over there, guns a blazing, and of course they go to the wrong country. Well, we know or maybe, they had the or maybe they, Act. or maybe they planned on just get taken out Af Afghanistan first, and then hey, Saddam's right over here, and everyone hates him. You know, they had the Patriot Act written before 9/11. Uh, it's right? true. So 855 they tried ready to, to pass go. it once before. Ready to go. Hold that thought. 855 450 free. This is Free Talk Live. We're coming up. This is Dan Pilla. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands and I can help you too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800 34 no tax to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, 
danpilla.com. Hunters, anglers, campers, and survivalists. Get back to nature. Expand your horizons with the highest quality, most versatile, unique slingshots and sling bows on the market at slingbow.com. Slingbow products are compact and models start from just $17.98. They're perfect for your bug out bag or storing in your vehicle. Give yourself and your loved ones the excitement and tradition of Slingbow. A new frontier in archery and truly modern twist on this primitive survival tool. Feel the thrill only at slingbow.com. Money, power, and respect are all yours at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Be seen as an industry leader. You can do it. The last application you filled out when it was time to hit submit, did your nerves spike? You didn't get the approval you seek, but there's a better way. We teach you exactly what to place into the right systems the right way the first time so you get approved. Get up to $100,000 in instant business credit. Many people will get cash on the spot. Use those two tools in your new corporate credit engine so you can walk into the bank and get your project funded today. It's all about today at CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Credit Success Secrets Revealed is explosive and ignites instant results. Dial 1-800-707-8719. That's 1-800-707-8719. 1-800-707-8719. Or just go to CreditSuccessSecretsRevealed.com. Com. BlakeDevelopment.net is a global leader in website creation, app development, and online marketing, catering to businesses of all sizes. There's really no job too big or too small for BlakeDevelopment.net. Do you have an idea for a killer app, but you don't know how to code it? Are you missing out on online sales? Or maybe your business needs help with social media. Websites start at just 200 bucks, and they're offering three years of free domain registry. Yes, they take Bitcoin. 844-SITE-123. BlakeDevelopment.net, 844-SITE-123. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Understanding your credit score is the first step towards managing and improving it. This is Charlie Sundstrom with your Van Dyke Mortgage Minute. The most influential component of your credit score is your payment history. Almost equally as important is the amount you owe on credit accounts. Also impacting your score, but to a lesser degree, are the length of time you've utilized your credit, the number of new accounts, credit inquiries, in your various types of credit accounts. To help achieve or maintain a healthy credit score, have a system set up to assure your bills are always paid on time. Don't max out your cards. It's better to have a high credit limit with a low balance. Never close old accounts. The age of these can actually help your credit score. But don't be afraid to use your credit. You need several accounts in order to have a credit score. Just keep the corresponding payments within your means. For your mortgage pre-approval and refi needs, start by visiting VanDykeMortgage.com. Corporate NMLS 3035. Van Dyke Mortgage is an equal housing lender. Charlie Sundstrom, NMLS 134251. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, talking about the bombshell memos, as they're being described, that were found in the Hillary Clinton email server from uh, and regarding to uh, George W. Bush and, uh, and Tony Blair from Secretary of State Colin Powell uh, happened on one of these emails came on March 28, 2002, which was a week before the summit between Blair and Bush at his Crawford Ranch in Texas. However, that summit was really... You know, already planned in advance. They already knew what they were going to talk about and what was going to happen because in the emails, it is revealed that they were already plotting war uh, with Iraq. Yeah, he said he had uh, he was ready to go to war with Iraq. He said he had uh, he had soldiers already set aside, ready to go. 
Yep, and then uh, then they were going to give him. Well, I'll, I'll read one of the ex- excerpts here uh, from it here in a moment. But a, a lot of people might be shocked by this. Of course, you shouldn't be. You should know that politicians lie. You should know that they lie to benefit themselves and their political parties. I got to say, I am shocked by this. And, and this the uh, surprises me. and their donors and the military industrial complex. Yeah, they're there to they're there to support their donors first and foremost, not the American people. And less, you know, they they gave a little unions maybe gave a little money. So I'll give you an excerpt from uh, the email from Colin Powell here in moments. But first, you need to know about SaveAtPurse.com. That's Save at Purse. Save at Purse.com. You can save big time on your Amazon purchases. You're probably going to buy something at Amazon anyway if you're a regular online shopper or even an irregular one. And then you can save big time when you do that over at SaveAtPurse.com. And when I say big time, I'm not talking about 5 or 10%. You can save that little if you want, uh, but you can actually, on average... Save 20% if you're in the United States. Uh, I've saved as much as 40%. The headphones I'm wearing right now, I save 29% on. You get to select the discount that you want. The higher the discount, now the longer it's going to take you uh, to get that order fulfilled. So if you select 40%, Mark, you were just modeling your boots that you're wearing right These now. These are shoes. Yeah, they don't have... Uh, they don't oh, they're above, not high tops. Above, okay. above my ankle, they're shoes. Got it. I don't like that whole con- con- being confined to my ankle thing. Yeah, I got you. So what was the discount you got on those? Well, I said yesterday on the show that it was 30%. I was mistaken. My wife put up uh, several things on the same day. Oh. One of the things she put up was 30%. These were 20%. Ah. So I, I, I Thank deeply you for the apologize, uh, misinforming my listening public. All right, there you go. Uh, but you can 20% save- off the shoes is Sweet. awesome. Uh, so you can save big time. Just go to saveitpurse.com. The catch is you have to use Bitcoin. If you've got Bitcoin, you can save big time. So go to saveatpurse.com. When you sign up through that link, Free Talk Lab, get a very small portion of your purchases from that point forward. So the former prime minister, this from the Daily Mail in the UK, has always hotly denied the claim that the two men signed a deal in blood at Crawford, Texas, to embark on the war, which started on March 20th, 2003. The email in question here from Colin Powell was dated March 28th, 2002. So mm-hmm. pretty much an entire year before that uh, sort of that meeting in Crawford. The Powell document, headed Secret Memorandum for the President, lifts the lid on how Blair and Bush secretly plotted the war behind closed doors at Crawford. Powell says to Bush in the email, quote, He will present to you the strategic, tactical, and public affairs lines that he believes will strengthen global support for our common cause, adding that Blair has the presentational skills to, quote, Make a credible public case on the current Iraqi threats to international peace. Is he claiming unquote. to be a good puppy? Is that what he's claiming? <laughs> well, what he's saying here is that uh, that Blair is going to give Bush tips on what to say. So here, Mr. Bush, just listen to this guy. He's smooth. He knows what he's doing. He'll give you the credible lines, the lines that you need to deliver Wow, like yeah, an if, actor. If, if you want to reach the, the British people... Uh, no, no, no one knows better than Blair. He's going to be able to to hook you up. Well, he was trying to help Bush present to the American people, right? So this so. is so he's not trying to help get convinced because he's he's got his own people to right. convince as well. That's correct. But the idea was they were going to meet in Crawford, and then Blair was going to uh, give Bush some lines that he could deliver to persuade people that this was a good idea. Uh, so they were both definitely a, a team in this whole affair. And uh, so five months after the summit, Downing Street produced the notorious 45 Minutes from Doom dossier on Saddam Hussein's supposed weapons of mass destruction. After Saddam was toppled, the dossier's claims were exposed as bogus. Nowhere in the memo is a diplomatic route suggested as the preferred option. Instead, Powell says that Blair will also advise Bush on how to handle calls for the blessing of the United Nations Security Council and to, quote, demonstrate that we have thought through, quote, the day after. In other words, made adequate provision for a post-Saddam Iraq. Critics of the war say the lack of post-conflict planning has contributed to the loss of more than 100,000 lives since the invasion and a power vacuum which has contributed to the rise of Islamic State terrorism. Specifically, or rather significantly, Powell warns Bush that Blair has, quote, hit domestic turbulence, unquote, for being too pro, uh, excuse me, quote, too pro-U.S. in foreign and security policy, too arrogant and presidential, Unquote, which Powell, Powell points out is not a comp, excuse me not a compliment in the British context. Mm. 
Powell also reveals that the splits in Blair's cabinet were deeper than realized. He says that apart from Foreign Secretary Jack Straw and Defense Secretary Jeff Hoon, Blair's cabinet shows signs of division, and the British public are unconvinced that military action is warranted now. So this was a big plot to persuade the British and the U.S. public uh, that this was a good idea, that Saddam Hussein was some sort of a, a danger to the world. Powell says that although Blair with, will, quote, stick with us on the big issues, unquote, he wants to minimize the political price that he would have to pay. Quote, Who doesn't? <laughs> his voters will look for signs that Britain and America are truly equity partners in the special relationship, unquote. The per- this is all what Colin Powell did, is yeah. writing in did, this memo. Uh, did the prime minister get reelected after this? I believe so. He was pretty popular um, at that time, you know, before. Yeah, he was on the scene for a while. So Iraq was over in 2003, or I mean. It started in 2003. I thought they got, I thought at the end of 2003, Saddam was captured. Well, oh boy, Iraq we'll went on well after that, but I, I, mean, I know there's, there was, they were there for a good long time. Oh, I'm going to look that up. Prime yeah, Minister. we should pull up a timeline on that. It's It's easy to get lost in all the years. The president certainly did his best to flatter Blair's ego during the Crawford Summit, where he was the first world leader to be invited into Bush's uh, sanctuary for two nights. Tony and Cherie Blair stayed in the guest house close to the main residence with their daughter and their mother, or one of their mothers. Uh, Bush took the highly unusual step of inviting Blair to sit in on his daily CIA briefing and drove the prime minister around in a pickup truck. Mystery has long soon. Yeah. What, what if they went out and cut some wood right after that <laughs> with their chainsaws? Ms., uh, mystery has long. I, ma- I imagine uh, these guys have never picked up a chainsaw in their life. The Bush was the Bushes do it all the time. Yeah, I think Bush. Uh, he's, was he, he a just, farm boy? He shows some far, some uh, at least some interest in doing some farm works. He's uh, a guy from Connecticut who uh, went to Yale. I uh-huh. mean, uh, let's be clear. Of course, Putin's right riding around bare chested on a on a horse. Right, that's true. Shooting cruise missiles out Mm. of his nipples. Mystery (laughs) has long surrounded what was discussed at Crawford as advisors were kept out of a key meeting between the two men. Sir Christopher Meyer, who is president or present rather in Crawford as Britain's ambassador to the U.S., told Chillicote his exclusion meant that he was not entirely clear to this day what degree of convergence was signed in blood, if you like, at the Crawford Ranch. But in public comments during his time at Crawford, Blair denied that Britain was on an unstoppable path to war. He said, quote, this is, this is what he said at the time, publicly, this is a matter for considering all the options. We are not proposing military action at this point in time, unquote. During his appearance before the Chillicote inquiry in January of 2010, Blair denied that he had struck a secret deal with Bush at Crawford to overthrow Saddam. Blair, that's right, the secret deal was before Crawford. Uh, Blair said the two men had agreed on the need to confront the Iraqi d- uh, director or dictator, rather, but insisted that they did not get into specifics. The one thing I was not doing was disassembling in that position, he told Chillicott. The position was not a covert position. It was an open position. This isn't about a lie or conspiracy or deceit or a deception. It's a decision. What I was saying was, we are going to be with you in confronting and dealing with this threat. Pressed on what he thought Mr. Bush took from their meeting, he said the president had realized Britain would support military action if the diplomatic route had been exhausted. Which, of course, we now know they weren't even bothering yeah. with that. Yeah, and by Shoot, the way, we're exhausted. Blair did make another uh, election, 2005 to 2007, so yep. he didn't burn that many bridges with his uh, his alignment with the U.S. Our toll-free number tonight is this a surprise to you? Mark says he's actually shocked. I can't believe that. This is Free Talk Live. That's shocking to me that you're shocked. Uh, it's Free Talk Live. Every once in a while, you get information that's worth changing your life for. This is one such time. You can save up to and beyond 25% on all purchases at Amazon. You probably heard of Bitcoin and just not thought much about it. You certainly know that you can get competitive pricing at Amazon, but now you can get a 25% discount on nearly everything you need to live. I've just given you a huge raise, and all you have to do is claim it. You go to saveitpurse.com and open an account. Do this right now. Don't wait. Then you fund the account with Bitcoin. You can buy them through expresscoin.com with a check or money order. There are other ways to get Bitcoin, but that's fast, safe, and easy. This information is worth you changing the way you do things. Go to saveitpurse.com right now, get signed up, and cash in on the huge raise I'm offering you. 15 to 25% off of everything at Amazon through saveatpurse.com. It's saveatpurse.com. 
Before using heart and body extract, my energy level was very, very low. I could only walk a few feet and then would have to sit down. I was tired and lethargic. But after taking heart and body extract, my energy level has improved greatly, and I can now walk longer distances without getting tired so fast. Thank you, heart and body extract. Learn the secrets of an effective, natural, 100% organic nutritional supplement for a healthy heart and circulation at hbextract.com. Hi, I'm Rick Osick with Famous Footwear. Did you know that premature birth is the number one killer of babies? That's why we support the March of Dimes in the fight against premature birth. Join us in supporting cutting edge research, treatment programs, and outreach to help moms have full term pregnancies and healthy babies. Learn how you can help save babies' lives at marchofdimes.org. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Silvia rated an A-plus by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hallow Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at keenvention.info. Visit keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. This year, Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Tuesday, gold is up $3 at $1,174 per ounce, and silver is trading even at $15.92 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $267 U.S. dollars. Check out our Halloween special on Australian silver spiders. And if you're looking for silver American eagles, we've lowered the price on those too. So give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or online at rrbi.co. You're listening to the best Liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. Join us right here, toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And, of course, we've got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. With you in studio, it's Ian. And Conan. And Mark. Also, I want you to join us on our brand-new website, freetalklive.com. Same URL. And same basic thrust, meaning that you control the content on the site. You can submit uh, suggested show topics for us to talk about here on the radio. And you can do that with our Reddit-based system. It's totally free to interact there at freetalklive.com. There's also now a Free Talk Live blog, uh, which is called FTL News, there on the front page. You can just click that. It's right next to the uh, the show topics option. And uh, the, the entire site's given a facelift. It looks great. It's snappy. It responds well, I think. I'm happy about it. And actually, if you try going to freetalklive.com during our live show hours, which are 7 to 10 at night Eastern time, it'll actually take you straight to the player. So one of the issues with the old site used to be you had to click a few times to actually get to the live listen option. Now it's right there on the front page when you visit the show when we're live. So go check it out. Give it a try at freetalklive.com. And, of course, if you like the show and you appreciate what we're doing, well, the website wasn't cheap to develop, so please send out some, send over some contributions <laughs> at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp.freetalklive.com. 
We are going over this story from the Daily Mail, and they have been given one of the emails from the Hillary Clinton email server. This is a classified, or what was classified document, uh, an email written by Colin Powell to George W. Bush all about his upcoming, at that time, meeting with uh, Tony Blair from the UK, and essentially just uh, revealing that these two guys were uh, behind the scenes communicating and, and plotting and uh, planning an Iraq war even when publicly it was being said that they were looking at diplomatic options because it wasn't until like a year later uh, when the Iraq war actually began. So they were they were well in the midst of this one year in advance, according to this email. Yeah, it's hard to believe that uh, they, they planned all this and all the theatrics that went into the, the invasion was were just that, theatrics. But I guess that's what it was. Um, I think it's important to note that, you know, this isn't just... Uh, you know, Bush bashing that this was in Clinton's email. And it's it not was. Like she, not like she let us know. You know Absolutely. Bill's, Bill's had every opportunity to just pop out and say that this was what was going on. He hasn't done it either. Yeah, these these emails, I I am of the opinion these emails should have never been uh, hidden from the public in the, fir- in the first place. Yeah, if they, no if they really wanted to carry on some, some suspicious crap like this, they should have been doing it with their own personal emails. But the fact that these were government emails, it was done on government computers— you know, all of these things should have been transparent to the public so that we can weed through them. And, you know, and this is, this is just like body cameras on cops. And, you know, it keeps everyone safe in the long run. You can't you can't pull stunts like this uh, if you know wh- whatever you're going to say is going to be out next week. Let me share with you just the very last paragraph here of this. I don't know how many pages this thing is. It's quite a few. Several pages, maybe uh, a 10 to a dozen pages. Uh, this memo from Colin Yeah, Powell. this is just a couple of the emails from all of the thousands. And from 30,000. Yeah, yeah, there's no telling what else is going to be right. covered in the next couple of months. Yeah, uh, and I guess we didn't have to have Edward Snowden for this one. The government did this one to themselves. Yep. It was a court decision that forced them to reveal this, and so now we get to uh, somebody's digging through them, thank goodness. Yeah, you think think this was a WikiLeaks thing, but apparently this, was, this came through channels. Uh, so it says here, to launch a ramped-up campaign to build support for action against Iraq, he will want neither to be too far in front, uh, referring to Blair, uh, or behind U.S. policy. As one FCO official pointed out to U- uh, pointed out to us, if Blair unleashes a full-scale campaign in Parliament and with the general public when Parliament returns from the Easter recess and U.S. policy turns out to be on a longer-term trajectory, when the time comes for action, the PM... The prime minister may find that his preparations have become unglued. On the other hand, if he waits too long, then the keystone of any coalition we wish to build may not be firmly in place. No doubt these are the calculations that Blair hopes to firm up when he meets the president at Crawford April 5th through the 7th. And that's the end of the message. So they met with the express purpose of hammering out the exact details of how this presentation should go, when the presentation should happen. Blair was going to give Bush lines, the word line, you know, the, the term lines is used in here, things that Bush could utter, uh, you know, to the public to persuade them to come on board uh, with this concept of invasion. You know, I... Uh, you know, there's times I find myself sort of practicing for the show, deliveries, yep. things like that. I mean, my wife calls it talking to myself, but I call it rehearsing. Um, and, and so I see nothing particularly wrong with that. However, in this circumstance, I guess when we find out that this, uh, you know, all this stuff that looked like it was playing out on the world stage. It was manufactured. Wasn't nearly entirely made of whole cloth, just yep. manufactured from our, for our, to, to convince us. Um, well, stage sounds like the right term. To convince the sheep, Mark, I wasn't convinced. I was against this war. Me and the, too. Well, you guys, and I'm uh, against the next one. I'm, I'm glad you guys get to be the ones that were. I was. Uh, I have to admit that I, I. I don't remember precisely. You were duped. Where my uh, position was the whole way through, but I was scared of that yellow cake stuff. <laughs> and uh, you know, at some I like point, yellow cake. It was the, pretty good. The especially is, the lemon. The cake is a lie, Ian. <laughs> yeah, it was. Um, at some point. I think about the time of mission accomplished. I'm like, yeah, this uh, things are going a little weird here. This uh, this is this that was what clued you in the yeah. mission accomplished. I think that right for me, a war was a, the United States won the Iraq War. A war is a conflict between nations. It's the so, peace. It's the policing, the um, external policing of Iraq that it lost, and it should have never been doing that in the first place. But that's what it was about. It was about occupation, regime change, setting new things up. It, Once, was, it was about their puppet 
uh, going into it for himself and not, you know, not following the rules any longer. He was going his own direction. No, we got to take him out. That's the Dom I'm talking about. Yeah. Um, so down with his statue and chase him into a hole and we find him a year later. Uh, and then we put some one of our own guys in charge. Well, I don't know if it was uh, their own guys or whatever. It was a terrible idea throwing off the uh, the balance of power as it uh, existed in Iraq as, uh, you know, had all kinds of consequences. What I said, you know, uh, way early on was they needed to create essentially three Iraqs and split them up. They just didn't want to do that. And they had made the the deal with Turkey to fly bombers out of um, Turkey that they wouldn't make a Kurdistan. So there you go. So, uh, you know, this was a shock to you, Mark, and you're saying that in 2015 that it is a shock to you. What exactly was it that you find shocking about this? Was it that Colin Powell lied to you and you happen to like him? I think or that might be that one was, of might be a it might be a big part of it. Or was it that uh, you know, that you somehow still thought there was something legitimate about the build up to the Iraq war and um, you're shocked to find out that it was all manufactured? The so I felt like the Bush administration was really sort of concerned about the yellow cake thing, but the yellow cake thing came after this, if I'm not, uh, you know, if I'm not mistaken. So that means that the whole, oh my goodness, dearie me, they got themselves a bomb, was just crap. Well, and, I would imagine the yellow cake thing was part of the plot that they sort of came up with to present to right. the, you know, the par- parliament and right. Uh, Britain. But yeah. do you understand that that's a, that's a big deal. There's a difference between hey, let's go kill these people and hey, it looks like they've got the makings of a nuclear weapon. We don't want Hassam, Saddam Hussein to have that. We need to stop them before it gets mm-hmm. started. Yeah, I'm sure they were talking about this at the Crawford meeting a year before. Right. Yeah, this is they this was this was planned in advance for sure. Sure was. Uh, the toll-free number here, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Maybe you want to share your comments and thoughts on this. You're certainly welcome to join us here. We've also got Skype username, lrn.fm. Now, I have a question for the two of you, and yes. especially for Mark. How many more of these types of false flag incidents do we need to come up in order for you to maybe get on board with some other uh, incidents that have taken place that got us into wars, like one big one where there's a bunch of towers that were uh, <laughs> that fell into their own footprint. I again. Well, if there's well, if there's a memo in here that says, yeah, we're gonna blow up those towers uh, next week or whatever, then that's good enough, right? If you can actually prove it. I mean, if, but if three or four or five more of these show up, you know, incidents that were that proved that uh, they were they were colluding, they were trying to get us into war, whatever to do whatever they could to do so. I mean. That's not good enough, Conan, because they're not, um, for me, that's not good enough because they're not related. So um, pe- people will say that the Sandy Hook shooting was staged or that some every st- every shooting that has occurred since 9-11 is staged. And I'm just of the opinion that every once in a while bad things happen. I'm, you know, sure, but if, I if mean, he's asking I you. I believe in he- conspiracy theories. There yeah. are conspiracy theories, but the simple fact this that there are conspiracy theories doesn't mean that everything, every conspiracy theory that is proffered, it doesn't. But is he was true. asking you if there was evidence for it, like rather I mean, than I mean, just this is, this is a this is a everyone has been saying that they really did know about the uh, the, the the fake uh, uh, uranium and the uh, weapons of mass destruction, and th- now we almost have proof that yeah they were planning on it a whole year in advance. I mean, how many more of those uh, uh, false flag conspiracy theories? that are going to come to light you need to see before you uh, believe the big ones. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust who will never betray you or cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Currency is too important a thing to be left in the hands of government bureaucrats, especially when billions of dollars can be created with the swipe of a pen. Overstock.com supports the cryptocurrency movement because it returns the power of an inflation-proof money to the people where it belongs. Did you know that you can use Bitcoin to pay for anything Overstock.com sells while enjoying free shipping on orders of 0.211 Bitcoin or more? If you support freedom in the cryptocurrency movement, you should support Overstock.com. 
My name is Jacob Hornberger. I'm president of the Future of Freedom Foundation, which Congressman Ron Paul awarded for having an outstanding freedom website. Write us at FFF at FFF.org, and we'll send you a free three-month subscription to our monthly journal of libertarian essays and our booklet, Economic Liberty in the Constitution, which George Mason University economics professor Walter Williams praised in a recent column. That's FFF at FFF.org. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.lrn.fm or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.lrn.fm. That's apps.lrn.fm. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keenan, the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, October 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.88 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,174 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $269. Antiwar.com reports facing growing condemnation from the international community for their actions in the weeks following their attack on the Doctors Without Borders Hospital in the Afghan city of Kunduz, an attack which killed 22 civilians. The Pentagon has admitted to a Friday incident in which they used an armored vehicle to smash into the bombed hospital, destroying potential evidence. Ironically, the vehicle was there to deliver investigators to the site, and while a Pentagon spokesman conceded they should not have done so, he claimed it was done in the interest of safety. Doctors Without Borders workers were within the hospital at the time, even though it was closed after the U.S. attack. The Pentagon promised to repair the damage caused in the break-in, which is the closest they're likely to ever get to admitting any culpability in anything involving the facility. Exactly how much new damage was done to the already bombed hospital is unclear. But the timing is suspicious, as the smash-in came not long after the White House declared its opposition to an independent investigation into the attack. Doctors Without Borders has suggested significant evidence was destroyed during the break-in, which subsequently will not be available if any credible investigation ever does happen. The Pentagon has admitted to knowing that the site was a hospital long before it ordered the attack and confirmed that Doctors Without Borders contacted them when the first strikes happened. Despite this, the U.S. continued the attacks for a solid hour and the Pentagon says it is unclear what happened after the Doctors Without Borders call was made. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the state of Ohio on Monday postponed all scheduled executions until at least 2017 due to recent difficulties in obtaining the drugs needed to perform lethal injections. Monday's decision marks the latest obstacle in resuming executions in the state, which have already been delayed for two years over the dwindling availability of the needed drugs. The problem is that many compounding pharmacies, which have previously supplied the drugs, are now refusing to sell them to prison officials on legal and ethical grounds. The European Union voted in 2011 to ban the sale of pentobarbital, which had previously been used by prisons, to the United States for use in executions. In January, Ohio officials postponed all executions set for 2015. Monday's announcement means almost half of the 25 inmates on Ohio's death row are receiving a de facto stay of execution, some of whom will remain alive for as many as three years beyond their original execution date. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates, like Namecheap and Amazon, at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. Or you can shop directly from FPP with Bitcoin in the Bitcoin store. That's shop.fppradio.com. 
Reuters reports the Obama administration said on Monday that it would require drone owners to register their unmanned aircraft as part of an effort to curtail rogue drone flights that pose a danger to commercial aircraft and crowded public venues. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox announced the creation of a task force of private sector and government representatives to craft recommendations for establishing the first ever federal drone registry. The recommendations are due by November 20th, and administration officials hope to have the registry in place before Christmas when they say more than 1 million new drones could be given as gifts to new untrained operators. The registration requirements would also apply to drones already in use. Drone industry representatives welcomed the notion of having a mechanism to promote accountability, but questioned whether a new registry could be in place in such a short time frame and said the government's authority to compel participation remained unclear. Fox said the registration effort would not delay the FAA's goal of publishing rules for commercial drone use by next June. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. It's really not creepy to have little, little kids mindlessly recite this anthem every day and pledge their life to a government before the good kids now come and get your riddle on free talk live it's free talk live you can join us right here toll free Our number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Joining you in studio tonight, you've got Ian. And Conan. And Mark. And, of course, you can join us online. Just drop by freetalklive.com. Brand new website. If you haven't been there recently, go check out the the facelift that it has been given. Hopefully, you will like it. It's still free, by the way, over at freetalklive.com. Uh, corrupt Silk Road agent Carl Force has been sentenced in his guilty plea for being a corrupt scumbag and basically botching the Silk Road case, even though they still sent Ross Ulbricht, who is the creator of the Silk Road, which is the underground marketplace, the first truly infamous, noteworthy underground marketplace on the Internet that was taken down by the feds in October of 2013. Ross Ulbricht was uh, convicted and sentenced to life in prison with no possibility of parole for programming that particular website. Uh, He was convicted of all kinds of things like conspiracy to money launder, conspiracy to hack, conspiracy to distribute drugs. And one of the people who was really important in uh, this case in making Ross uh, the guilty verdict or getting him that guilty verdict was Agent Carl Force with the DEA. Uh, The DEA... And the there was another guy in the Secret Service, Carl Force and the Secret Service agent, were both uh, found guilty. They both pled guilty to various felony corruption charges uh, for essentially manipulating evidence and for, uh, let's see, extorting money, I believe, $800,000 worth of Bitcoin, if I'm not, if I'm recalling correctly. Yeah, a huge amount. Uh, yeah. And we'll get into more details on that case here. He has been sentenced. I will tell you about his sentence but first, we go to Skype, where Daryl is on the line, our own Daryl W. Perry. Hey, Daryl. Hey, so I heard Conan talking about mm. uh, some of the conspiracies and asking Mark, Mark, how many more of these conspiracies need to be proven true before you believe the really big ones? And I, I think that that's uh, definitely a fallacy of thinking of just because one thing or two things or even five things does not mean that everything is a conspiracy. Agreed. This is true. But if you can get some of these big whoppers like this one, 
Uh, I mean, how many trillions of dollars were lost on that one? I You're mean, referring that's... to the war in Iraq, which in the first hour we discussed uh, a leaked memo now from the Hillary Clinton, Clinton cl- uh, cash from Colin Powell to George Bush, which basically uh, revealed that Bush and Blair had had been colluding well in advance, a year in advance of the actual Iraq invasion that How they were H- going Hillary to go to Hillary Clinton get this email? I don't know. Uh, she uh, had it. Of course, we were talking earlier, Mark. I mean, what if, all right, you're, you want a, you want an interesting twist to put on this whole tale. What if those emails were planted? What if they're not even real? I mean, how do you, how do you, could, could this, is this something that could be planted? Could, um, you, could you make this up? Well, I, Conan, at 30,000 emails. I know. You just, you just slip it in there. In order to do a radio program, I have to assume facts. In order to bring up the ideas of liberty, I have to, you know, sort of deal with, if I lived in a world where socialism made more sense and was the uh, more moral philosophy, I might choose that. However, I live in this one. I have to assume facts are facts. And, uh, you know, I'll admit that I'm probably, when I take news stories here, I know that every news story that I've ever been a part of, they've gotten something wrong. Mm -hmm. Meaning you were a subject of the story? Right. Where I've I've had personal knowledge of what's going on. I'm like, oh, well, this is right. And I tend to, you know, I I understand journalists have a tough job and it's not easy to get it right every time. I try to be kind about that. But, you know, it kind of annoys me that when the Rand Paul um, came to town and they quoted me as being skeptical of his message. What the hell Mm. are you talking about? I'm not skeptical of his message. I came out here at 7 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, you'll believe anything he tells you. I came here at 7 o'clock in the morning to watch the guy give his speech. I'm not skeptical. Skeptical. They must have been talking to Ian right after you, and they got your conversations uh, confused. I purposely didn't tell Ian that I was going to this, <laughs> otherwise he'd have had him his unwashed friends. Oh no, it was too early. Hassling. He would have. He would have been out there hassling you instead of <laughs> Rand. Fine, it, I can we, handle him. Okay, uh, so Conan, I, I've got a question for Conan. So let's just play pretend here for a second and pretend that one of the emails that gets unveiled tomorrow out of this you know large vast amount of emails from Hillary Clinton let's just pretend that one of the emails tomorrow lays out the plans where Hillary Bill George Bush Al Gore Dick Cheney and everybody else from both of those administrations got together and said this is how we're going to carry out 9/11 this is step by step how we're going to do it do you think that the patriot act is going away do you think that real id is going away do you think that the national security agency is going away do you think that everything that happened because of 9/11 is going to be repealed I, and I, that all of the millions of people that have been killed and displaced from their homes are going to be magically put back in their homes i do not uh i do however believe that more people will wake up um, and realize that uh, this government that they have been that the government teeth they've been sucking off their whole lives is is all based on lies and i don't think a whole lot of people would wake up but i think that more will and maybe we might get some of these war criminals uh actually uh you know we might be able to do something about it uh no i don't think the patriot act is going to go away but it might it might take a couple of years it might you know this is this might all be for naught i mean I've always said I think I don't think the, I think the only thing that's going to fix all this is that is for the, the the entire system to collapse so that we can start building the pieces up. We can go. We can be in a location like New Hampshire, uh, where secession now, where we can easily slip away from the uh, the federal government. And do you uh, think barely- the system will collapse if you know somebody reveals that every conspiracy that people believe is true? No. I don't. I don't think so those. If, I don't think those emails Barack are going to. If Barack Obama holds a press conference tomorrow and he removes his human fleshy (laughs) sort of human face mask and reveals that he actually is a lizard person, do you think that people are going to say, oh, wow, I've been lied to this whole time? Barack would never do that unless the unless the uh, the mothership was already floating above D.C. (laughs) and all the other lizards are getting you're not actually one of those are you i am, I am not okay, but no he w- but he wouldn't do well, that i'll tell you what we do if uh, the, if one of the lizard people showed their face out in public and uh, the rest of us lizard people had not allowed him to do such a thing it, the the kind of torture that that lizard uh, person will experience will be Horrifying. You are going to drive the paranoiacs in our audience crazy <laughs> with that kind of talk. So, Go ahead, Daryl. Th- th- there's one more question that I've got for Conan, and then I'll get off the line. Why yeah. you so on there's me? a conspiracy theory that every conspiracy theory is connected. 
Do you believe that one? I believe that there might be some out there that they're just playing with us. They're making it so obviously fake uh, just to see how far they can take it. Like, for example, this last shooting that happened in Virginia. Oh, God. I know. You're that, one of those. That you guys want me to talk about. Like, there's some that they, I, I just don't have any problem with. I, I do have problems with that. I don't, you know, I, I'm not sitting down trying to pick through every single one. Like, like Columbine. I don't, you know, that. You thought that was real? It seemed pretty reasonable to me. But some of these, like the, la- like the silly Virginia reporter. Silly? I mean, that lady got shot to death. So I don't. The well, I think it's silly because I don't believe it. Well, wh- what, what part do you think, don't you believe? What do you think it's like for those people's family? Assume for a second you mean, it's you true. Mean, you mean their actor father and the, and the actor it's boyfriend? True, um, what do you think that might be like? If they're real parents and the yes. real boyfriend who don't exist, I okay. feel for them. I and my heart goes out to them, but I don't. I don't believe they Hold exist. On. Who, well, so, are there two dead people in Virginia or not? Oh, she's not dead. Her hair is uh, dyed black, and she's off doing some CIA stuff uh, over in another country. <laughs> you don't actually believe what's <laughs> oh, coming no, no. out of your mouth. No, the the, the black dude, he's he's Vester probably he's, Flanagan? he's probably he's dead. dead. Yeah, he's okay. dead. But the but the boyfriend and the and the girlfriend, they're you know, and I don't know about the uh, and I don't know about the cameraman Didn't either. Did Flanagan kill himself? What happened with that guy? You, I don't remember. So so they tell you. No, Ian. The, he was supposed. I I think he was gunned down in his car. Uh, on the road and that's why the bbc reporters who had that footage weren't had to give up their footage right there in the spot Some yeah. ridiculous no nonsense. it's <laughs> daryl whatever, whatever. Oh, daryl right. hung up <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's going to put a lizard mask on he's going to run downstairs and scare the bejesus out of us look i mean i gotta agree with daryl completely on this i mean just because some conspiracies turn out to be true doesn't mean they're all true i mean that's ridiculous i'm not saying that they're all going to be true i'm just saying that there are some whoppers out there that are just completely fake and that if you can get enough people on board if there's a memo that comes out tomorrow that reveals that the 9-11 thing was fake uh, you know all i'll have to say that it, to that is oh okay well those guys over there were right yeah but what okay. would that how, now what can how we do would, to end the state how would society take that kind of a message 855 450 free you can answer it think you're fat you might just be bloated find out by calling now for a free trial of new biotics the new breakthrough that flattens bloated bellies fast For a free trial, call 1-800-965-1170. I used to be plagued by pot belly and constant bloating. After taking new biotics, my belly flattened and continues to get flatter. My sense of bloating and discomfort is gone. If you've got a big belly, you might not be fat. You might just be bloated. New Biotics is scientifically formulated with natural ingredients to flatten bloated bellies fast by cleansing pounds of rotting food and toxic sludge from your body. It even combats periodic heartburn and acid reflux. So just think how much better you'll look and feel. Think you might be bloated? Call now for a free trial of New Biotics and see how much flatter it makes your belly. You might be surprised. But hurry, call now for details while these free trials last. 1-800-965-1170. That's 1-800-965-1170. 1-800-965-1170. My name is Bill Bonner, and I'm the president of the largest private news and research network in the world. And I paid for this airtime because I have an important message to the American people. There's a change coming that the government isn't telling you about. This change has deep implications for life in America, from where you shop to the doctors you visit and the family you want to protect. Look, I've made predictions like this before. Thing is, I was right then, too. A few years ago, I warned that housing prices would collapse. They did. Before that, I warned that dot-com companies would crash. They did. Those who listened had a chance to save themselves. But this has nothing to do with the stock market. This will affect us all. You can watch the video for free right now by going to disappearingwealth.com. Again, that's disappearingwealth.com. This is the Onion Week in Review. In a landmark 5-4 to four decision issued this Wednesday, the Supreme Court ruled to allow Americans to cram cash directly into politicians' mouths. The ruling, which effectively eradicates former prohibitions against stuffing checks and stacks of $100 bills straight down the throats, ears, and other orifices of presidential and congressional candidates, is expected to fundamentally alter the ways American politicians have large quantities of money shoved right into their bodies. In football music news this week, the 1985 Chicago Bears reunite to record their first new material since the Super Bowl shuffle. The group says the new material will be darker and more introspective than its shuffle era work. And in this week's op-ed pages, a man asks why, if God exists, doesn't he throw us like a really f- 
Making Sweet Party. In other news, an increasing number of men feel pressured to accept realistic standards of female beauty. FedEx confirms that more than 600,000 people try to mail themselves each year. And a recovering alcoholic doesn't need friends to have a good time. This is the Onion News Network. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website or idea email me mark at freetalklive.com while our satellite channel is free to listen to it's not free for us you can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm It's Free Talk Live. You can join us right here, toll-free. Our number for you, 855-450-3733. That's 855-450-FREE. With you in the studio tonight, you've got me, Ian. And Conan. And Mark. If you care about privacy when you're on the internet, you need ProXPN. They will encrypt your online data before it reaches your internet service provider. They provide you with what's called a virtual private network. And they do it right, offering OpenVPN, which is the gold standard of network encryption. ProXPN has apps for Windows, Mac, iOS, Android, and there's Linux support as well. So getting set up is super easy. Just get started. Go to ProXPN.com. And you can use code FTL50 to get 50% off of the regular monthly price when you buy an annual account with that code FTL50, which brings the price down to uh, about the price of a good cup of coffee monthly, which is incredible. Uh, and so that's pretty good, but you can get an even better deal if you pay with Bitcoin. We're talking two years of ProXPN for less than $50 worth of Bitcoin when you go to proxpn.com slash amp that's proxpn.com slash amp as in advertise market and promote like the free talk live amp program in fact five dollars of your purchase price will actually go to the amp program when you do that it's a huge savings in fact the biggest the deepest savings we've offered so far with proxpn i don't know if they can make it any cheaper than this <laughs> they can give it away for free that's yeah. about as cheap as it could go well but uh, you have to have bitcoin there is actually a free uh, free plan at proxpn but there it's, is yeah. like it gives, gives you a taste of what it's like proxpn.com slash amp if you got the bitcoin you got that awesome deal proxpn.com slash amp if you don't have bitcoin use code ftl50 and get that 50 percent off let's go to doug listening in illinois doug you're on free talk live with ian conan and mark yeah, I uh, I definitely recommend a book called Uranium, War, Energy, and the Rock that Shaped the World. Um, a lot of it wouldn't be relevant to what you've been talking about, but around two, page 220 to about page 300 definitely would be. Um, talking about an older book here, you know, one thing that got America brought into the war had been that Iraq had been ready, or they were buying from Jordan, a unique type of metal uh, tube made out of aluminum, and they, were, they had a whole order of them put in. But our own energy department and the British government knew that they were the improper one. They were for, like, rocket-making, not for enriching uranium. Um, our government knew, and the IAEA knew, that Iraq did not have any type of plant for doing uranium enrichment. And finally, a man by the name of Rocco Martino had uh, brought forth uh, fake documentation claiming that Iraq had been ready to buy uranium from Niger to enrich. And that turned out to not be true. Um, the Italian reporter, he offered an Italian reporter 12 grand for the information. Everybody knew it had been fake other than George Bush and, you know, our government. The British government didn't go on it. The French government didn't go on it. Um, they all knew it to be fake. But Bush, Bush put that in there to get the country into Iraq. I've called up before and I've claimed, you know what, they either lied about it or they were very, very dumb. 
And with the track record of our government lying like they do, I think that, that they did it. They did it intentionally to get the country involved into a war. I, I didn't believe that up until this evening. Yeah, and I'm talking about older information. I didn't even catch your whole show to know that more what more documentation came out here. Apparently, um, for some reason, at least, uh, there's a what's the news source on this one? Uh, the Daily Mail. The Daily Mail has uh, discovered that Hillary Clinton had in her possession an email between Colin Powell and George W. Bush. Or this, uh, Blair. Uh, I thought it was, it was Powell's email to Bush about, about meeting okay, with Blair. About, okay. Yeah, and a year seems, prior to the invasion. That seems strange to me, but okay. Um, you know, I'm going to assume these journalists have done their job, and uh, you can read the full uh, full emails. Yeah, I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can just pour through this crap. <laughs> um, no, just the one email that the we're manifestos talking about. Manifestos and, and that no, sort not of thing. the thirty thousand. We're just talking about the one. email. I get email that there's Col- a, Col- like Powell. you're going to claim that there's an email there, yeah. but how am I going to know that it's? Uh, it's not that I disagree with uh, that it says what it says. I'm claiming that how the heck did she get it? But besides that. Um, I'm like, okay. It, say, it says she inherited these emails from predecessors in her. And she, I it's guess, she, Secretary of State. Right, job. right. Yeah, I guess that you'd have to know so, it. So the question is, is that when is the email going to show up that actually says weapons of mass destruction? Hey, let's use this as uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, to get us in. So that so far that one hasn't showed up. Not yet. Doug, uh, thing. I, anything else you want to share? Go ahead. No, I, I highly recommend the book. I highly recommend he, he provided all information, uh, every footnote there for you to look up on your own. And I've only given a fraction of the information that he found to pretty much document that either the, the, our government had been totally dumb or they were lying, one of the two. And I think, I think that that can, you know, that can be a part of it with 9-11. Do I think that our government intentionally did what they did or did what they, people claim that they might have done on 9-11? No. But do I think that it could be within the realm that our government allowed it to happen? It could be. I don't know, you know? Thanks, well, Doug, for your call I, tonight. I, I definitely agree that the, sometimes I think uh, they've got some information on the table. But you know what? Hey, if, if, we, if, if they were to let that come out into light, uh, this great war that we can get in won't happen. But, I mean, if we just kind of, I don't know, smudge the, the report a little bit, maybe look the other way, uh, maybe not report something— We'll be in war. We'll have we, we have that that war we've been talking about uh, next year. Conan, you said what would society think if uh, the news came out, proof like this, an actual email that you know made it clear the government had uh, concocted and put together 9/11, the attacks on 9/11. Uh, you said what would society think about society that? as in all, the whole globe? Mm-hmm. You know, not just the U.S., but I mean, you know, other countries, a lot of other, a lot of other countries, by the way, who are all. Uh, against uh, it would some, some of these ideas. It would definitely be one of the biggest conspiracies to come true, right? I mean, certainly there's some biggies out there, like the assassination of JFK. I don't even know. Uh, I, think, I think the moon landing, uh, oh God. that's a little bigger. Well, uh, are you one of those moon deniers? Hey, man. Uh, there's a, there's a, a Russian uh, there's a Russian crew that are actually sending— you got too look, much look time at, on your hands, man. Man. I mean, we can't send uh, a probe over there with a camera on it and actually get— uh, you know, good. I don't know about you. Camera, I can't send a good camera to the moon footage. Ever. I mean, look at we got the technology. I mean, you can, we got guys building their own spaceships. By now. we, you mean the U.S. federal government? People I'm not involved people, in that. Uh, rich people. But I mean, uh, w- we we can't send a probe over there with with a nice digital camera on it and Where's get some good over ch- there. The to moon. The moon? Okay. Well, who wants to go to the moon? It's just a rock. Well, well, there's some there's some flags over there. Then it'd, it'd be nice to get nice you snapshots. Get proof, proof I want to get the, I want to get pictures <laughs> of the footprint, man. But no, I'm, I'm not even fighting that one. I mean, that's just that's just a curious that's a curiosity right there. Well, but you yeah. wouldn't be able to see it from Earth because there's the he said the, send a probe up. The atmospheres too would uh, would uh, you know distort the picture too much to be able to see, say, a footprint or a flag or something right. like that. Um, I don't know. I mean, you know, I, I no, I believe that they landed people on the moon. I think that yeah, it, isn't it plausible, Conan, that they were? Did Buzz Aldrin punch somebody in the face for um, giving this? Uh, I don't know. Proposing yeah, he this. was asking, "Did you really land? Did you really land? You didn't land, did you?" And he got popped. Yeah, <laughs> right. I risked my that freaking proves he life, didn't land. and you jackass say that uh, all this stuff was for nothing. You see, this is the problem. Is is that? It's I mean, okay. So uh, it's one thing. Uh, it's it's ludicrous. To just take the government story at face value. I get you. But it's ludicrous to take every stinking conspiracy theory out there at face value, too. These people are just, frankly, crazy people behind their computers. The sad part is, is that there's, um, you know, the, we used to call paranoid schizophrenics what they were. Now that they're behind computers, we call them experts. 855-450-FREE. That's the toll-free number. 855 450 
888-900-3733. Would love to have you comment and uh, answer Conan's question. What would happen if some big revelation about 9-11 came true or the moon landing? It's Free Talk Live. Would it destroy the government's legitimacy? A lot of people's lives and bodies are out of balance. AlkaVision Plasma pH drops optimize pH level and get rid of harmful waste and acid. Just a few drops in water restores vibrance and energy and gets you back in balance. Now order two bottles and get $10 off your order. Sign up for monthly auto shipping and save 25%. Call 800-518-7615 or visit alkavision.com. Alkalize your body, supercharge your health at alkavision.com. It's time to kick some ash because cigarettes have met their match. Smokers are switching to Vapriate e-liquid by LaSig because when you kick ash, you kick tar and smelly smoke too. LaSig smokes the competition with real people customer service, a seven-day satisfaction guarantee, and same-day fast free shipping. Become a vapor today at LaSig.com, spelled L-E-C-I-G.com. LaSig e-cigarettes. Kick some ash. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 85% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keen. Keen is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. If you're a regular reader of FreeKeen.com, you know there's a lot going on in Keen. Keen is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at FreeKeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at FreeKeen.com. That's FreeKeen.com. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at Twitter.LRN.FM. That's Twitter.LRN.FM. It's Free Talk Live. Join us right here, toll-free, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well at Skype, username LRN.FM. 
More coming up about the corrupt Silk Road uh, DEA agent, Carl Force. He's been sentenced. We'll tell you more about that uh, here in moments. It's with you in the studio is Ian. And Conan. And Mark. And Mark, tell me about Free Talk Live gear. Yeah, you can get, uh, we've got new uh, t-shirts that we put together. Um, I love the Ringer tees. They're a black t-shirt with uh, gold around the arm and the neck, and uh, the gold matches Free Talk Live's logo, and it's just beautiful. One of them is the logo on the front, and it says Free Talk Live across the top, and then has the logo, and the other one um, has the logo on the back and says, taxes are theft across the front, in case you want to, I don't know, start some arguments with your friends. Go to gear.freetalklive.com. We're trying to get pre-orders uh, put together by October 31st, and you do that, you'll be part of the initial run. It's gear.freetalklive.com. We've worked very hard to make these. I, I can't say they're cheap, but they're affordable, uh, especially for, you know, sort of specialized stuff. So gear.freetalklive.com. Mark, all my friends know that taxes are theft. Who are you <laughs> hanging out with? Well, um, I understand that uh, you, you, you carry that around and you're going to start some conversations. What would society think? Uh, Conan, you were asking that question about what if one of these conspiracy theories that you apparently believe in a number of these, uh, the 9-11, Couple of them. the 9-11 conspiracy theories, that's, the, a big, that's the big one. You brought up the moon landing, uh, as well. What would society think if this came out as that these conspiracy theories were true? Uh, and, and certainly there have been a number of, uh, conspiracies that have shown truth over so the years. There's a whole bunch of document false flag uh, uh, that have happened and throughout history that, uh, that, that, goes, that have gotten us in all kinds of wars. Yeah, started the Vietnam War, That's as right. a matter of fact. I mean, so there's definitely some biggies. There's I've no heard doubt a rebuttal to the uh, Gulf of Tonkin. Uh, the ghost ship, what happened? Yeah, whatever it is. Um, I don't know. I didn't read it because I don't care. So the, wait, there's a rebuttal claiming that it wasn't a false flag, as has been admitted by the government, basically? I, I guess. Uh, that's the claim. Um, but here's well, what... Now, that's kind of like a reverse conspiracy theory, right? Where the government is admitting to have what the false flag... Thing happened well, where... here's the thing, and you've always asked me, what is, what will what does believing in these things actually prove? What will it accomplish? And I've always said that you, they, you can't find out about it 40 years later. It's got to, it has to be in a How relatively it has to be in the in the in the, in the at least in five years. Well, while it's been 13 or something. While it's still fresh, 14. while people are still sending their kids to war, they're they're still joining up to go fight made up uh, terrorists. Uh, or or terrorists that were that were created because of the war, and, um, but, and that's but, why I've said that uh, 9/11 is you know the 9/11 truth movement is dead. Yeah, it's old news. Yeah, it's I, just, I, it, I agree with that. It's never going to change anything because it's just too far gone. And They're, these emails are uh, more than 10 years after they were uh, submitted. So I mean, it's already old and it's corroded. So it's no good. It's got to be. It's got to. It's got to happen quick. And hopefully, uh, with today's technology, more of the guys you're talking about behind computer desks um, are able to jump on top of this and find them as they're actually happening uh, and, and get it out, get it back out to the public. But I mean, what, but the question is what would happen? What, how will society actually accept this? If they did find it in a, re a relatively quick manner, I don't know. I don't know how many of the sheep will wake up and actually say, you know what? That government, man, it's not all that great. I mean, it looks like they're doing everything for themselves and they don't really care about us at all. Well, Conan, they could say all kinds of different things. Some people would certainly maybe become aware that the government is corrupt and can't be trusted. Certainly there have been a number of incidents over the years that have communicated that to people, that the government has lied and can't be trusted. This news about Tony Blair and George Bush plotting more than a year in advance to invade Iraq shows that they are liars again and again. I mean, there have been stories like this over decades that have shown real crystal clear that the government is a bunch of liars and they can't be trusted. But yet people continue to believe that this next batch of politicians, well, they're honest. Look, Donald Trump, he's a good guy. You know? Yeah, he's, or, he's not spending, he's only Bernie spending his Sanders. own money. Bernie's only spending his own money. He does. He's not in anyone's pocket. So, I mean, look, they, uh, if that were to come out, there'd be some people who would say, oh, I knew that George Bush, he was a liar. What a scumbag. I'm surprised. Well, at least we've got Barack Obama in there now and he's a good man. Or or, uh, or, you know, next uh, Bernie Sanders slash Donald Trump is going to get in and they're going to change everything. I don't think it would ruin people's beliefs in the system. They still are of the belief, even though they know politicians are scum and they're liars, generally. Most people know that. Uh, they still believe like in the synonym. system. Yeah, they still they, believe yeah. that this is the best system in the world and they wouldn't change that for a moment. And they, they, all those people are followers and they don't know 
they wouldn't be able to take care of themselves if they had the opportunity. They they want someone to take care of them. Well, they're probably uh, they, putting their own food on their table. They've, and... been, they've been built that way. We live in a society where people have grown up uh, entitled to all of these things, all these benefits, and they wouldn't be able to survive on their own. So, yeah, you, you have the perfect uh, sheeples. Uh, for people like Bernie and for Trump to to just walk all over the place. So I mean that re- reminds me of a uh, a meme that I posted on the Facebook wall here at Free Talk Live, Facebook.freetalklive.com. I'd seen some story yesterday or the day before about uh, supposedly they can see a Dyson sphere being built, in, uh, you know, 500 something light years away. I'm not entirely. I didn't a read Dyson the story. Dyson sphere. Or, yeah, how, or how about that big uh, uh, alien? planet that's floating around and is blocking the light from one of the stars. Have Something you- like this. Uh, some, one of these stories. I didn't believe it for a second. What's a Dyson sphere? A Dyson sphere is a um, it is something built around a sun in order to capture the energy from the sun. Um, solar panel. Like science fiction. It's a big solar panel. It, this was a new, this was some kind of story. I didn't click through it because I don't have, I don't have, you know, my time is not uh, worth I didn't, wasting. I didn't click on it either. So. <laughs> it's ridiculous. I'm not going right, to build anything the around the sun. I'm not going to, not our sun, a sun. Any sun. They're pretty big things, <laughs> aren't I mean, they? I, I, uh, yes, they are. Yeah. I'm not going to, I didn't click on it, but. It's like 16 light years away and yet we can't. We can't send a probe over to our moon to see the damn footprint, but we can see this this alien ship floating around. So wait, the sun. Conan, does that mean you don't believe they actually sent a probe to Mars? I don't. I haven't been following that one, but it sure does look like they any, got some it pictures. Sure, it sure does look like any other desert you ever seen. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the um, it's all about funding. It's Dyson all about the it's all about, about the money. NASA's they're not being funded anymore, man. They got to they got to do something to get the money. They're getting some money. I mean, let me tell you, that's right. Their, their budget's a lot bigger than mine. Yeah. But anyway, with this Dyson sphere, basically, um, people were like, "Oh no, there's an intelligent uh, species out there that could visit Earth and enslave us all or attack us or whatever." This that could happen. Something. Sure. Well, no, it couldn't. What? Well, sure, an intelligent species could visit Earth and, and attack Where's us. Where's your that gold, humans? Why would they do that? I mean, let's assume that they're in world uh, domination. I mean, universal it, domination. It, this is the point, know. though. If they did market to be like a camping trip, it wouldn't be here to get our resources or to enslave our women well, or maybe whatever. Maybe they do want the the resources. I don't know what they're going to do with our women. Um, genetics, but, genetic uh, material. I, I, I'm. I don't know. Okay. Uh, Why do they invade other countries? Trip. Cause they can. Power. Well, they invade. They invade resources. other countries because um, they, you know, they don't. They aren't superior in this way. If aliens huh? came here and wanted to take over the uh, the human race, all they have to do is to turn us into pets, is to offer free health care, uh, free schooling, ah, free everything that Jews, they want. You're going there. And then, well, that presumes that the alien would not alien race would not be a violent race, and there would be more. Why would they want to do that? What's the point of killing a bunch What's, of people? You can't the, analyze the uh, the in- intellect of beasts you don't even understand or let alone have any concept of. Right. What's the what's the TV show Z or something? I'm not sure. Anyways, they, the aliens come down and they have the white flag and all, and then they start giving the human stuff, free health care yeah. and they're yeah, all yeah, this yeah, good yeah. This government that's not corrupt. And at, at But at the end of the day, they're just v. there. To, they're yeah. just v. v. They're just there to enslave the humans. For, for what reasons, I don't remember. I don't know if it was for eating them or what. I don't know what it was. I, I don't know what it is. I haven't uh, seen it, but this is pretty obvious what would happen um, from that standpoint but, is that – you know, they just turn us into pets. My pigs get free food, free shelter, free and they everything, get slaughtered. free health care, and then at the end of the day, they kill them. That's we right. kill them. That's not what you do with your pets. The, we, no, no, we're not pets. We're whatever the farmer wants us to be, whether it's food right. or whether it's genetic Every animal m- works, material. Ian. I, every animal works, and uh, there's no separation between a farm animal and a pet. They're the same thing. They work. Jazzy, the studio beasts, she does work. She uh, protects the house. She, no, she's no Mark. Jazzy's a, a pet. House that, a house that has uh, a dog is seven times less likely to be attacked by a, a burglar. Maybe a little bit of farm animal in her, but she's mostly a pet. Farm yeah, animals don't. Farm animals work for their for their living. She's not the intended to be turned into food or a product. Eight fifty five four fifty free. She's Neither here just a for sheep love. Dog. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. It's Free Talk Live. As a pioneer of the e-commerce movement, Overstock.com is proud to be the first major retailer to accept Bitcoin. Overstock was the first because Patrick Byrne, Overstock CEO and founder, firmly believes in personal freedom and cryptocurrency. Over the past 16 years, Overstock has furnished over 18 million homes with a diverse line of products to suit everyone's unique styles and preferences. Support Overstock and freedom of choice while enjoying free shipping on orders of .211 Bitcoin or more. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. KDArmor.com is your one-stop shop for the most affordable body armor period. With packages starting at $169.99 and free shipping on every order. Why would you go anywhere else? KD offers soft armor and rifle threat rated armor up to level 4. Go to KDArmor.com and get your body armor today while you still can. Mention this ad and receive a free water purification kit for a limited time with any body armor package. Go to KDArmor.com. That's C-A-T-I Armor.com. Come and take it. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state-required test topics in an effective, multiple-choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction-related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. The Shire Free Church offers a sanctuary to those seeking an escape from state churches. The Shire Free Church is an interfaith, diverse group of people that may not share identical theological beliefs. As a member in or minister of the Shire Free Church, you are a sovereign individual and may be the faith of your choice. We don't claim to have all of the answers. We are open to all peaceful people. We want to learn from each other. What unifies the Shire Free Church and its diverse members is peace, love, and liberty. There are many paths to God, one for every individual. The Shire Free Church does not define a specific path beyond those parameters that must be your foundation. Peace as your way, love as your guide, and liberty as your light. Learn more at church.shiresociety.com. That's church.shiresociety.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's post pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Stouffer's, helping bring your family together with wholesome dinner options, even on the busiest of nights. Find dinner table ideas to bring your family together at letsfixdinner.com. To get kids involved in dinnertime conversation, ask specific questions, not broad ones. Instead of what happened today at school, try what was the best thing that happened today. The more specific you are, the more they'll have to say. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. Listen to LRN.FM on any phone, anytime. 213-493-0309. That's 213-493-0309. Free Talk Live. Join us right here. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've got Skype as well. Our Skype username is LRN.FM. Coming up in just over a week from now, about a week and a half, we've got Keenvention, the third annual edition of Keenvention, which will be featuring four dozen speakers, roughly, uh, four dozen folks from the New Hampshire Liberty Oops. Movement. And one person from outside of New Hampshire. We've got Gavin Andreessen, who will be joining us from fairly nearby uh, Massachusetts. Uh, he is the... I thought you were staying away from that kind of uh, uh, speak speakers. Generally, I do, which is why 44 of the 45 speakers gotcha. will be coming from New Hampshire. But we're going to make an exception for Gavin Andreessen, given that he is the head programmer for Bitcoin. 
and he's not getting paid anything more than any of the other speakers to mm -hmm. speak, so it's not costing the event anything extra. Uh, so he's donating his time basically to, to come up here and be on the Bitcoin panel, which actually just made a feature article uh, on Bitcoin.com. So we've talked about Bitcoin.com here on Free Talk Live. They actually had one of their reporters contact all of the Bitcoin panelists. Everybody who's been announced is going to be on the Bitcoin panel. We've got a guy from Open Bazaar who's going to be there, Chris uh, Chris Pacia. Oh, wow. He's the head programmer for Open Bazaar. Uh, there's uh, Jeremy Kaufman from Library, LBRY.io. I don't know if you've heard about this, but no. this is like some new startup here in New Hampshire that's going to be a Bitcoin-based or blockchain-based startup that will allow media creators like video makers to put their video online through this system and then people can basically uh, reward them directly with Bitcoin for their product. Sounds pretty cool. Uh, so he's going to be there and uh, our very own Derek J. Freeman, uh, Darren Tapp from Neocash Radio is heading up the panel and uh, Matthew Pings, another uh, free stater who is uh, kind of a realtor guy. He accepts Bitcoin for, for his business. So we're going to have all kinds of different Bitcoin folks up during the Bitcoin panel. And that's just one of 11 different panels that we'll have at Keenvention covering all manner of different topics from legislative action. We'll have an all-star legislative panel with, uh, let's see, four A-plus state representatives on it. A-plus rated by the New Hampshire Liberty Alliance, plus one A-rated representative. Uh, so all A-rated reps up on the stage all at once. That should be a real uh, fun panel. And then also, uh, you know, everything from secession to cop blocking and more. You can go to keenvention.info, learn more about all the panels, all the speakers. They're all up there. Uh, the keynote addresses are going to come from our very own Daryl W. Perry, one of our co-hosts here on Free Talk Live. You heard from him earlier on the show tonight. He's also a presidential candidate for the Libertarian Party for 2016. Uh, Chris Reitman, who's also been behind a microphone here on Free Talk Live, he's an oath keeper who's actually uh, making waves as a town selectman in a nearby town here to Keene. He'll be talking about his experiences uh, in that role. And then also Christopher David, who I'm super excited to have speaking at Keenvention. He is the illegal Uber driver. He's out on the seacoast of New Hampshire making waves out there uh, by violating the town ordinance that basically prohibits Uber from operating within the town. There's actually breaking news as of today with that whole Uber situation. They finally have ticketed their first Uber driver on uh, out in Portsmouth. The police have finally stopped the first driver for Uber. They've been getting snitch reports from the local cabbies. The cabbies have been keeping logs and ratting out the different Uber drivers that they see around town. They've been calling the cops on them. So finally the cops pulled the first one over and they ticketed her. What's the violation? Uh, Operating without a permit, basically. Wow. Uh, driving. Uh, you know what? That's good. Yeah, they just ladies ago. So they pulled this lady over. She's 62. She's a grandmother, and she was, you know, she's doing this as a side job. Her main job is like school bus driver or whatever. So she's a professional driver, uh, and so she's doing this at nights. Papers, please. So apparently, she was on her way to pick up two women from somewhere. And those two women were stranded because the cops stopped this old, la older lady. She's not old, but you know, middle-aged lady. And uh, they ticketed her. So they've they've issued their first ticket. This news is just coming out of uh, Portsmouth. We'll have Christopher David, the guy who's heading up the illegal Uber operation in Portsmouth. He's going to be one of our other keynote speakers. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a really interesting keenvention. And it's not too late for you to get your tickets online. You don't have to get them at the door. You pay a little bit more if you get them at the door. So go and grab them online. 60 bucks for the entire weekend of October 30th. Through November 1st, there's going to be some great social events. Conan, you're throwing a bonfire for the second year in a row. There's also going to be the uh, the Hallow Keen costume dance party as well. Uh, so lots of fun stuff here in Keen for a weekend. Hallow Keen weekend here. Uh, go to keenvention.info. As we go to Nathan in Texas, he is on Skype. Hello, Nathan. Uh, hi, Ian, Mark, and hey. Conan. How are, you, how are you guys? What's on your mind, Nathan? Go ahead. Well, I wanted to talk about um, the collapse of uh, society, and I don't— uh, I don't think it's going to come from realizing that no one landed on the moon or what, whatever we were talking about before. Yeah. But uh, I think it would have to be economic in nature. And I wanted to con to uh, analyze it in terms of the, the RK thing that I called about last week. But you're going to have to reset us. <sighs> so RK, uh, thing. RK um, R's and K's, what are these people? Well, uh, they're, they're two reproductive strategies. Uh, R is sort of uh, low investment, uh, lots of, uh, lots of uh, reproducing and, you know, lack of competitiveness. And the Ks are more competitive and put more uh, investment into their offspring and so forth. And 
the claim of the theory is that this uh, arises, or this gives rise to two different psychologies and people, and that's the you know the, the rabbits and the wolves. So right. And so, so uh, the, and these are these are two viable gene set uh, ideas, uh, except both of them. If you go to the extreme left or right, they they'll essentially kill themselves off. So they're they're in constant battle uh, to uh, uh, to to get their dominant gene out there. Right, because they're built for yeah, exactly. They're built for different environments. If you have a you know a lot of grass and uh, you know it's free, you don't have to do anything to get it, then competition is a waste of time because you'd just be fighting people over the free grass. And, and you know, conversely, if you're an Alaskan timber wolf. And uh, I've actually, I saw this when I was doing some of my research. If you're a, a lower ranking wolf and you try to do some extra mating with one of the higher ranked females, then you're going to get swatted away real fast. Right. So, uh, in, a, in a wolf, we, we, uh, Mark and I looked this up last week. In a wolf pack, only the alpha male and female are allowed to mate. All of the lowerlings are not. And if uh, It's and, uh, incredible to me that uh, an alpha female is able to exert such power over a wolf pack that she can keep away the uh, males from the other females. Well, it's not just her keeping away. her. The rest of her pack will work with her to keep uh, a dominant male away who shouldn't be doing what he's doing. They just won't let him eat. Funding. It's so, f- f- fascinating. So anyways, go ahead. Yeah, so what does this have to do with the fall of uh, American s- governmental structure or whatever? So in nature, there tends to be an equilibrium that gets formed because the, like usually you'll have like a certain amount of prey, like say deer or whatever, and then you'll have a certain amount of wolves or bears or you know whatever preys on those those deer, and you'll you'll hit some kind of equilibrium, right? You you won't just have deer breeding out of control year after year, or uh, or you know or unless like that. unless something happens to the predators, right? The equilibrium right. is essentially right. starvation. So like a, and, you know uh, a given ecosystem supports as many of these given animals to the point that they um, don't starve to death. That's it. Right. Essentially. And see, the thing with humans is that humans are not as fixed as animals. Like uh, if you take the RK idea in terms of psychology, you can have populations of humans that are more or less productive, that are more or less competitive, that more or less have a, you know loyalty to one in-group or a clan or whatever. And so um, the, the idea would be that civilization would progress in a cycle. So, you know, take Rome as an example. You would have hardy Ks who would establish the society early on. You know, there'd be a lot of, uh, you know, merit would be rewarded and mm-hmm. there wouldn't be a lot of, uh, you know, disloyalty and things like that. Then over time, uh, decadence and corruption sets in, uh, the population grows and also becomes less competitive, less hardy. I mean, you can read about the decline of the Roman legionnaires, how they, you know, could ford rivers and hike uh, many miles with heavy packs. And this was true of the later. Mongols, too. Once they uh, ceased to uh, be on the verge of starvation, uh, you know, a couple of generations in under Kublai Khan, these guys couldn't fight the way they uh, they did under Genghis Khan. Okay. So eventually resources, see, the, the weakness of R is that resources are always finite, but the desire is always infinite. So eventually there's some kind of crash. They're consumers. Some kind of Right, and so then you have uh, some kind of crash, and eventually that resets itself, and the Ks sort of uh, you know, come up again and try to make a new society. Yeah, but the Ks don't uh, have to do with the government either. in the United States failing. Are you going to tie this in somehow? Yeah, so the government in this case is subsidizing a large amount of ours through the welfare state. You have welfare consumers who are not as productive, not as competitive as would be a free market. And so... The result is that if there's, for example, let's say the dollar collapses or something like that, then suddenly you have a bunch of people who are taking a bunch of government handouts, and it's not just direct handouts, but just you know consider the, the uh, effect the federal government has on the whole economy. Suddenly that all goes away. Uh, what's going to happen? There's going to be a lot of rabbits eating themselves. Yeah, it's going to be hell uh, in the uh, the big back. cities, yeah, that's get, for yeah, sure. Get away from the big cities, for sure. Thanks, get out Nathan, to the woods. for the call tonight. I don't see that you need to explain the R and K thing to say that things are going to be tough when uh, you know th- there's some sort of economic crash in big cities due to welfare recipients. Eight fifty five four fifty free. Eight five five four five zero three seven three three. This is Free Talk Live. 
The new fourth edition of Healing Our World, The Compassion of Libertarianism, will take your understanding of liberty to a deeper level and has over 1,300 updated references, new cartoons, and a forward by Dr. Ron Paul. With discounts for multiple book purchases, the fourth edition of Healing Our World is a great gift for the liberals, pragmatists, environmentalists, and Christians in your life who think libertarianism is cold-hearted. Get yours today at healing.freetalklive.com and use promo code FTL for a $5 discount. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, October 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.88 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,174 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $269. Antiwar.com reports facing growing condemnation from the international community for their actions in the weeks following their attack on the Doctors Without Borders Hospital in the Afghan city of Kunduz, an attack which killed 22 civilians. The Pentagon has admitted to a Friday incident in which they used an armored vehicle to smash into the bombed hospital, destroying potential evidence. Ironically, the vehicle was there to deliver investigators to the site, and while a Pentagon spokesman conceded they should not have done so, he claimed it was done in the interest of safety. Doctors Without Borders workers were within the hospital at the time, even though it was closed after the U.S. attack. The Pentagon promised to repair the damage caused in the break-in, which is the closest they're likely to ever get to admitting any culpability in anything involving the facility. Exactly how much new damage was done to the already bombed hospital is unclear. But the timing is suspicious, as the smash-in came not long after the White House declared its opposition to an independent investigation into the attack. Doctors Without Borders has suggested significant evidence was destroyed during the break-in, which subsequently will not be available if any credible investigation ever does happen. The Pentagon has admitted to knowing that the site was a hospital long before it ordered the attack, and confirmed that Doctors Without Borders contacted them when the first strikes happened. Despite this, the U.S. continued the attacks for a solid hour, and the Pentagon says it is unclear what happened after the Doctors Without Borders call was made. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently remove the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. 
UPI reports the state of Ohio on Monday postponed all scheduled executions until at least 2017 due to recent difficulties in obtaining the drugs needed to perform lethal injections. Monday's decision marks the latest obstacle in resuming executions in the state, which have already been delayed for two years over the dwindling availability of the needed drugs. The problem is that many compounding pharmacies, which have previously supplied the drugs, are now refusing to sell them to prison officials on legal and ethical grounds. The European Union voted in 2011 to ban the sale of pentobarbital, which had previously been used by prisons, to the United States for use in executions. In January, Ohio officials postponed all executions set for 2015. Monday's announcement means almost half of the 25 inmates on Ohio's death row are receiving a de facto stay of execution, some of whom will remain alive for as many as three years beyond their original execution date. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates, like Namecheap and Amazon, at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. Or you can shop directly from FPP with Bitcoin in the Bitcoin store. That's shop.fppradio.com. Reuters reports the Obama administration said on Monday that it would require drone owners to register their unmanned aircraft as part of an effort to curtail rogue drone flights that pose a danger to commercial aircraft and crowded public venues. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox announced the creation of a task force of private sector and government representatives to craft recommendations for establishing the first ever federal drone registry. The recommendations are due by November 20th, and administration officials hope to have the registry in place before Christmas when they say more than 1 million new drones could be given as gifts to new untrained operators. The registration requirements would also apply to drones already in use. Drone industry representatives welcomed the notion of having a mechanism to promote accountability, but questioned whether a new registry could be in place in such a short time frame and said the government's authority to compel participation remained unclear. Fox said the registration effort would not delay the FAA's goal of publishing rules for commercial drone use by next June. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. A new crispy snack cracker will ease the crushing pain of modern life. The dull, all-consuming ache of present-day existence will be slightly alleviated when Nabisco's breakthrough T.C. McCrispy's line of crackers arrives today. Available in regular Garden Ranch and Zesty Cheddar, the new crackers will flood consumers' bodies with fat, salt, and starch to produce a pleasing sensation of warmth and nourishment, momentarily freeing them from a relentless, crushing sense of profound grief. Mel Krychek is Nabisco's Director of Corporate Communications. Our tasty new snack cracker will, if only for a few lovely moments, significantly lessen the hideously bleak and empty torment of modern life that festers in every solitary soul. Nabisco expects most despair-riddled consumers to eat an entire box in one sitting. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. Yes, this is Free Talk Live, and you are invited to join us here on the radio waves. You can bring up whatever happens to be on your mind. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. It's Ian with you tonight. The moon landing was a hoax, Conan. <laughs> Mark Cash. <Hedge. laughs> Uh, ArsTechnica.com reporting on corrupt Silk Road DEA agent Carl Force. He's been sentenced now, finally, to 78 months in prison today by a judge who said his difficult upbringing didn't warrant any exception to the sentencing guidelines. District Judge, uh, U.S. District Judge Richard well, Seaborg. <laughs> I'm sorry to hear about his rough upbringing, and I really hope the best for him in uh, federal the federal penitentiary. But um, I, I, you know, I don't hope the best for him. This guy's a scumbag. The Dread Pirate Roberts, uh, supposedly Russ Albrecht here uh, in the Silk Road, he got a life sentence. For programming a website where people could sell drugs and other things. Yeah, and if, if probably, the, and selling was, some drugs on the website. If this was Old Testament, uh, this agent would get at least what the guy he put in jail got. Seems like it makes more sense than 
I, like this just doesn't make any sense. This corrupt government agent who had the trust of the American people, supposedly, um, you know, goes and abuses his power while investigating, you know, this this bad actor, um, and he gets seventy eight months. The bad actor gets a, a lifetime. That doesn't make any sense to me. Yeah, these these people should be held to a higher standard, and so his so any sentences he gets, in, these people get for for being bad apples should be magnified just because they're held to a higher standard. If they're going to be well, all they claim he- they're held if, to if, a higher yeah, standard, yeah, if they're going to be not. heroes when they're good, then they need to be straight up devils whenever they're you know they've done wrong. We we've had uh, heard cops say they're held to a higher standard. There was a cop just the other day who said that to a demo in the streets. He claimed that the police are held to a higher standard. That is it's absolutely bull. It's false. absolutely bull. Yeah. Well, the, if they're held to any standard, then it feels like it's a higher standard because everybody always feels like they are the beset upon one. It's human nature. Uh, J- Judge Richard Seaborg said that, quote, the extent and scope of Mr. Force's betrayal of public trust is quite simply breathtaking. I would agree. It is compounded by then the let's fact— Let's deviate from the sentencing guidelines upwards. Uh, well, there may be that you can't go uh, beyond a certain point. Oh, but, I'm uh, pretty sure they can. It's compounded by the fact that it appears to have been motivated by greed and thrill-seeking, including the pursuit of a book and movie deal, unquote. Force, is investiga- uh, Force investigated the Silk Road drug trafficking as part of a Baltimore-based task force. He took on additional personalities that weren't authorized by his bosses. Using one called Death From Above, he tried to unsuccessfully extort Ross Ulbricht, who earlier this year was convicted of being the Silk Road boss, the Dread Pirate Roberts, and sentenced to life in prison. In another online persona called French Maid, Force convinced Ulbricht to pay him or uh, for law enforcement counterintelligence. So just to give you a little bit more information about this guy, Mr. Force, uh, at one point he was able to get into the Silk Road as an administrator. Essentially, they popped one of the administrators uh, for selling whatever it was he was selling. They somehow got to an administrator. And then Mark Force took his login information Mm -hmm. and started to act as though he was the administrator one of the administrators of the Silk Road. but So that was his job, was to do that. But in addition, he was also creating these other Silk Road personalities and using them to attempt to extort, and in some cases successfully uh, extort, Ross Ulbricht. And, of course, obviously, as a law enforcement officer, he's not supposed to be handing over counterintelligence or uh, you know intelligence to Ross yeah. Ulbricht. Selling intelligence is probably not part of the job description. Information about force. And so this, of course, brings up the, uh, the question of, did Ross Ulbricht actually order the murders of people as he was being uh, libeled with those accusations in the media by the federal government when they were accusing him of running the Silk Road? They, they sort of slathered him with these accusations of, oh, he also hired people to uh, commit murder for him well, but how are we supposed to know that for sure when this man corrupt agent now guilty of corruption mark force had access to all of the details from behind the scenes on the server and could have planted those chat logs well also um that, that's interesting but we are to presume um that somebody is innocent until proven guilty that's what yeah. we've been told all along and so therefore ross albrecht is innocent until proven guilty of these charges and the united states federal government has not seen fit or nor has any state government seen fit fit to uh, attempt to convict him. So at yeah. this point, I can only presume that that was flack in the news media. I have no idea. Um, and until they, you know, until they do otherwise, I, I mean, right, they've, they've had the trial uh, for him setting up uh, this drag, drug website. And, you know, they're supposed to, as public servants, they're supposed to convict murderers. They haven't just bothered, haven't bothered to do that. Information about force and another corrupt agent, that's the Secret Service agent, was kept out of Ulbricht's Silk Road trial. Force was arrested after that and then pled guilty in June. Uh, Judge Seaborg's sentence was less than the 87-month sentence that the government requested, but it's substantially See? more than the 48 months that Force's defense lawyer had asked for. In addition to his crimes involving Ulbricht, Force also ripped off a customer of Coin MKT, a Bitcoin-related company that he was illegally moonlighting for. He stole $370,000 from a Coin MKT customer, putting $37,000 in a government account and keeping the rest for himself. As part of his sentence, Force was ordered to pay $337,000 in restitution to the victim, identified only as RP. He was ordered to pay $3,000 to Curtis Green, a former Silk Road staffer whose Force's team arrested. During the sentencing hearing, Force's lawyer Ivan Bates 
said that while his client accepted responsibility for his crimes, the judge should take into consideration forces mental illness and family history of alcoholism and abuse. Because yeah. they really care about those things when they're sentencing everybody else. Bates. Well, this is, but this is one of their own, Mark. This yeah. is their one of their children's. They got to take care of him. There's no doubt he's going to jail, said the defense attorney. He's lost his career. He's lost his marriage. He's lost everything he's had. He'll always have a life sentence because of the mental health issues he has, unquote. <laughs> yeah. Oh, poor baby. Bates also said that four and shouldn't so, so will Ross Albrecht have a life sentence. Right. For real. He said in a that, real federal prison. Yeah. That four shouldn't have been doing undercover work at all. An undercover mission in Puerto Rico in 2008 caused him to have a break from reality, after which he was institutionalized. Force wasn't allowed to return to his work at the DEA until 2010. The notion that Mr. Force should get a reduction because he was operating in a stressful environment and has mental health issues, that would send an incredibly dangerous message, said the prosecutor. Many federal agents operate in stressful environments. It's a stressful job, she said. Force is barred from communicating with Sean Bridges, who's the other agent in the Baltimore office who was convicted of stealing from the Silk Road during the investigation. And Mr. Bridges, that was the uh, the Secret Service agent who was yeah. involved in the uh, the investigation, is uh, sentenced or scheduled to be sentenced in December. So now the big question that remains here after this news of both of these agents pleading guilty to various felony level corruption charges is: Will this these new revelations? Uh, will this come into play in a favorable manner for Ross Ulbricht in his appeal? I can't see how it can't. Um, so I've said many times on the show and have said it for years, you're not going to find justice generally at the first level of uh, courts. It's in the appeals that you're going to see these. Their matters of law are going to be uh, meted out, and you have to bring them up in the trial in order to um, have them ruled on in the appeal. But ultimately— But they couldn't bring these guys up during the trial. I know. Well, that's part of the right. Like Ross Albrecht has so many things he can appeal on. Unfortunately, he's liable to be in jail for 10 years before the appeals go through. I was in prison with a guy whose uh, whose appeal went through and they just came and they got him right off the wreck field and took him. But he had already done I, I, several years, several years. I just can't I can't say how long it was. Ross but, has been in for two years now. Now, well, two years is nothing compared yeah. to how long this is going to take. Well, the lawyers are in deep on this one. They're entrenched, and it's it could take him 10 years. Wow. This makes me sick to my stomach hearing stuff like that. It's horrible. Um, if you wanted to contact Ross, he's still sitting in a prison cell, and I'm sure he'd he's love to hear from anywhere. you. He's got plenty of time to write letters. Uh, you can contact him via the information at freeross.org. You can also donate to their defense fund, they're going to need a lot more. They started with like four hundred thousand dollars in legal bills for just the uh, the first trial, and I think that didn't even really cover it. I think it was like six hundred that they needed. And his parents, you know, they mortgage their home. They don't have a whole lot of money. Uh, they need help. Yeah. Well, if uh, if you want to see this conv- conviction get overturned and support freedom of uh, the marketplace, then please get behind freeross.org. That's freeross. Dot org And, of course, you can join us here on the phones, 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Ian uh, says, no more RK. He's tired of it. I'm so He's tired, tired of, of the wolves and the rabbits. I love it. Uh, the By the way, we'll talk about another corrupt cop here in a few moments. This one is a little bit dirtier in some ways than the last Uh-oh. guy. Oh, no. It's Free Talk Live. I'm Steve Sitkowski, a former Wall Street insider. I'm holding a book that will show you investing strategies which could help you earn the kind of money you've always dreamed about. And right now I'm giving this book away for free. So who needs to read it? If you're in the middle of your career and worry you'll never have enough money to retire, you need to read this book. If you're already retired and your income isn't enough, you need to read this book. And if you don't want to be selling burgers at 80, you need to read this free book. It includes the strategy I use to make a 72% profit on a trade where the stock only moved 12%. You'll need at least a million dollars to ever fully retire. If you're behind on that goal, you really need to read Trade Like the Pros. And you can for free by calling 1-800-944-9358. Skeptical that it will deliver results? It's a free book, so what do you have to lose? Find out how at 1-800-944-9358. 1-800-944-9358. Earthquake, floods, winter storms, prolonged power outages, or war. Each of us have had that moment when we recognize that we need to be better prepared. 
We typically do the same thing. We start with food storage, then we address the need for water, but have you considered heat storage? I'm talking about staying warm in the cold. Here are some things for you to consider. How will I keep my family warm? The standard answers are firewood, coal, or propane, but the problem with that if you need to be on the move is you can't take it with you. Another concern? There may come a time when you need to stay warm without smoke, like in times of war. There may even come a time when you can't burn fuel. The answers may be simpler and less costly than you think. For these answers, go to FortressClothing.com. Again, FortressClothing.com has the answers to your heat storage dilemma. Don't get stuck in the cold. FortressClothing.com. You'll never be cold again. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. LRN.FM is proud to announce our official listening apps for Android and iOS devices. Now you can easily tune into our streams anywhere, anytime on your smartphone or tablet. Just visit apps.LRN.FM or search for LRN.FM in the Android or Apple app stores. Please download, rate it five stars, then share the link on social media, and let your friends and family know how you're listening to LRN.FM. Download it now, free at apps.LRN.FM. That's apps.LRN.FM. This year, Roberts & Roberts Brokerage Daily Precious Metals Update. In early trading Tuesday, gold is up $3 at $1,174 per ounce, and silver is trading even at $15.92 per ounce. Bitcoin is trading at $267 US dollars. Check out our Halloween special on Australian silver spiders. And if you're looking for silver American eagles, we've lowered the price on those too. So give us a call today at 800-874-9760 or online at rrbi.co. If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. You can join us here on the radio. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Tonight in studio, Ian here. And Conan. And Mark. Check out Conan on his show. It's a television program, first and foremost, but also is available on YouTube and in podcast form. It's called Black Sheep Rising. That's right, and we're going to be at Keenvention on Saturday at noon we're going to be live right there in Halloween the Halloween edition oh, of Black yeah, Sheep Rising. Oh, yeah, right there with a live audience. How many times? Have you ever done a live episode of your show like that before? Porkfest. At Porkfest, okay. okay. And the last event was uh, was was a pretty good turnout. We didn't have a lot of like uh, audience interaction, which is what I was kind of going for. We had mm -hmm. a pretty girl on stage, and I think people were just enwrapped with her. I see. And, but I, I was trying to do something more like that uh, on this show, you know, to get more, you know, more interaction. We do have three guests, uh, Katie McCall, Ellen Ball, and Brett Vinat is going to be From there. From School Sucks. Speaking he's, of pretty girls. He's going to be, yeah. <laughs> he's going to be there for the entire second hour. And cool. uh, we're going to have it there. I'm going to have my drops and, uh, uh, you know, good guests and maybe some audience interaction. Uh, yeah, definitely if you're. Uh, I'm gonna, and I'm I'm, not, I'm going to try to live stream it as well. I'm gonna I don't know if that's gonna happen. I don't know what the Wi-Fi there's free Wi-Fi is. there. Well, if it's fast enough, yeah. uh, it should work. But uh, yeah, uh, Black Sheep Rising, uh, it's a fun little program. And you can go watch all the back episodes. BlackSheepRising.org is the website. Yep. Uh, so let's go to your calls and your thoughts. Uh, we'll continue here on another dirty cop. This one gets really dirty. 
and uh, in a sexy way. We'll talk about that. And I'm not saying what he did was sexy. We'll tell you about it here in a few moments. Uh, but first, let's go to Web Keys on the line in Manchester. Web Keys, you're on Free Talk Live via Skype. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, you're on the air. Hey, uh, so I watched the video on um, the Supreme Court case about Church of the Sword uh, yesterday, and I was wondering if uh, if Mark could, could talk about what his experience was uh, at the case and what he thinks the outcome might be. What is the Church of the Sword case, Mark, before uh, we get into Webkey's question? Yeah, the Church of the Sword is a church that reach, uh, that uh, has been meeting in uh, New Hampshire, and as uh, the ministers have to be New Hampshire residents in order to be, um, you know, members of, or ministers of the Church of the Sword. So they can't live in their bus? Um, you can't be an inhabitant of uh, New Hampshire? You have to be a resident? I'm not sure what the legal terms are. <laughs> okay. they, have to, they have to be in New Hampshire. They can't be uh, residents of other states. No. And... Um, you know they 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 meet regularly and they are essentially you know non-theist in the sense that they don't take a position on god lots of different people lots of different ideas there um and their case was brought i guess they were a case of a tax exemption on a parsonage which happens to be your home that's right um and the lower court this uh, what they call the superior court had deemed that uh, the church of the sword wasn't a church uh, much more of a club i think is what they were saying and this was from what i could tell largely uh, trying to figure that out as far as the the supreme court uh, you know uh, supreme court's point of view and I heard both of the arguments on both sides, um, you know, the lawyer for Church of the Sword, the lawyer for uh, the town I live in, and I really, um, you know, the judges went after both sides, um, and I'd have to say that the the lawyer for the town just looked bad. It seemed like his main thrust of his argument was um, that he called he called the members or the organizers of the church uh, anarchists. He said they're individual anarchists, and individual anarchists cannot be parts of groups. And it's <laughs> it's really just a laughable position, right? <laughs> you know, people. No, people but that's that, but that's the that's the the mindset of what an anarchist is is that they they're just out there chucking bottles through windows, and they don't really have affiliations with anyone. They don't realize that it's not about no rules; it's about no rulers. But you can have groups all day long. You can be affiliated with people. There's no sure. problem with that. People can have groups in the state of New Hampshire. And anarchists, he has, did not make the, anar uh, the argument that anarchists weren't people. So therefore, the New Hampshire Supreme Court has really no uh, position other than to, at the very least, not say that anarchists can't be part of groups. They're probably going to remand this back to the court. I just, I just want to say, uh, that if you think about the, the, uh, the root of the word, the, the roots of the word anarchy, compared to the word like monarchy or democracy or something like that, um, that's speaking to uh, government and, and the interaction between uh, a human being and a government as opposed to a yep. more general group. Right. I mean, it, this doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. Um, it's like saying, oh, well, once you call yourself an anarchist, as if anyone had called themselves an anarchist, I'm a minister of the Church of the Sword and I am not an anarchist. Um, but it, once you call yourself an anarchist, you can't be in groups anymore. No Cub Scouts for you. No no baseball teams. No nothing. Well, that was one of the claims he made. It was the most ridiculous. But the other claim was that, well, they don't actually have a god, so therefore it's not a religion, which seemed to be relatively easy to beat that. Uh, right. The, well, the Buddhists have had a religion for several thousand years without, without a god. god. Mm -hmm. So therefore, this is another specious and ridiculous argument for which the town in which I have lived has paid thousands of useless dollars for. What do you think about uh, how that applies to the separation of church and state and how, if in any way, um, uh, preference has been given to other other religious groups? Yeah, it's it seems obvious to me that uh, that the the. the that this is just a, an argument where hey, we don't like the idea of there being a new religion. Religions are too uncontrolled as it is. Mm -hmm. We don't like them. It's upsetting to us. And, uh, oh, yeah, that tax-free status, we don't like that either. So, no, there can't be a new religion, um, and we're going to have to fight it every step of the way. But they most, will. But most new religions really have been fought every step of the way. Yeah, and, and what does this attorney have to do during his day anyways? This is, you know— this is something for him to get, get well, by. He's not a town uh, employee, right? He's no. a contractor, isn't he? They yeah. hired him. Yeah, they don't have the you know the, they don't have the it's lawsuits. A, it's a small town. They don't have the money to uh, to have a professional attorney on staff all the time. 
Uh, so it's an interesting case, and, and and if the Supreme Court rules in favor of Church of the Sword in this case, that will remand the case back to Superior Court, and odds are good they're going to issue a ruling that will not specify whether or not they consider Church of the Sword to be a religion. That's not really the question on the table. Uh, that was right. one of the reasons why the case was dismissed, but all the, the court is being asked to do is determine whether or not the Superior Court made a mistake or an error in dismissing the case at the point at which they dismissed it. So if the court rules in the Church of the Sword's favor, the case then goes back to Superior Court and moves forward towards a trial, which presumably will be a jury trial. Did the judges? Right? Did the, I, I think I think it is, yeah. but I don't know any. You know, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've been following the case to some extent. <laughs> yeah. so. Did the I judges? Mean, you guys are the lawyer and folks more so than I am. Uh, Mr. Webkeys, any, anything else? I was just wondering, do you guys have any any estimate as to when um, there will be a result from the hearing? Uh, it could be as little as a month. It could be as many as as long as they want. So the, yeah. so the Robin Hood case took around eight or nine months, and some cases are as short as three months. So who knows? We were buying squares for the uh, for when we thought the Supreme Court would rule. Um, and uh, you squares know. is it gambling? Term? Uh, well, you can call it what you want, buddy. Um, gambling's a, a legal term, and I won't be uh, corralled in by uh. your, uh, your line of, this line of questioning. <laughs> However, uh, I did pick uh, January the 14th. Um, I hear that Thursdays are more likely. How's that? Hey, uh, thanks for the call, Web Keys. Appreciate it. If you want to jump in here, whether it's freedom of religion or a sick pervert cop, uh -oh. we'll talk about that on the way here. 855-450-3733, 855-450-FREE. You can join us here on the radio. Also Skype in at Skype username LRN.FM. Virtually anyone can hack your cell phone and track your calls, your texts, your emails, your every movement, but only if they can detect a signal. Stay one step ahead of hackers and Big Brother with a block at Pocket, a custom-made pocket infused with pure silver that creates a complete Faraday enclosure for your cell phone. For free shipping to the lower 48, visit BlockItPocket.com or call 888-315-9618, BlockItPocket.com, enhancing health and privacy. Paid non attorney spokesperson Adam Pulaski of the Pulaski Law Firm with principal office in Houston, Texas, is the attorney responsible for the content of this ad. This ad is not legal advice, and the choice of a lawyer should not be based solely upon advertisement. Services may not be available in all states. Attention, Zarelto users. If you or a loved one took Zarelto and suffered a serious bleeding event, you may be entitled to financial compensation. Zarelto is a popular prescription blood thinner used to prevent blood clots and protect patients from strokes. These serious bleeding events have led to numerous cases of hospitalization and even death. Phone lines are open 24 7. Call 800 261 0937. That's 800 261 0937. Keenvention is coming up fast, October 30th through November 1st. Get your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Keenvention is an intimate event where you can meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire, including Oath Keeper Chris Reitman, Libertarian presidential candidate Daryl W. Perry, illegal Uber driver Christopher David, Neocash Radio's Dr. Darren Tapp, State Representative Mike Sylvia rated an a by the NHLA, The Seditious Sirens, The Rebel Love Show's Rob Mathias, Tech Guru Brian Sovereign, Cop blocker J.P. Freeman, new mover Dr. Taryn Lupo, longtime political activist Dennis Goddard, Church of the Invisible Hand Minister Rich Paul, Shire Dude, and dozens more. Only 100 tickets are available in advance, so lock yours in now for just $60 or with Bitcoin. That includes access to the Hello Keen Costume Dance Party. Reserve your tickets now at Keenvention.info. Visit Keenvention.info for more speaker announcements, or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's Keenvention.info. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate. Oof, I think we've all had enough of that jingle, don't you? If you're going to invest in property in New Hampshire, it just makes sense to support a liberty-friendly realtor. Call Mark Warden of Team Porcupine Real Estate for investment property or rentals in the free state. Or visit his website. Come on, you know it. PorcupineRealEstate.com DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. 
So the protection of life, liberty, and property is, is what the Free State Project is all about. But it's an, it's an effort to move 20,000 people who understand. It's about demonstrating to the entire country. That, yeah, we can have a free market, a truly free market. Making it just a free, great place to live. It's the world's largest voluntarist libertarian community, and it's, it's only getting bigger. That's amazing, to be able to move to a place where other people like passionately believe in being free and independent. What the Free State Project is managing to do, though, is to put their money where their mouth is. It's physically getting up across the country and saying, let's go someplace and let's demonstrate the power of these ideas. There's a lot of kind of philosophy that surrounds liberty. There's a lot of thinking about it and talking about it. But here in New Hampshire, people are doing it. 101 Reasons Liberty Lives in New Hampshire, a documentary by Free State Project Early Movers. Watch it free at 101reasonsfilm.com, 101reasonsfilm.com. You can put the Liberty Radio Network on the air in your area. Visit broadcast.lrn.fm to learn how. Broadcast.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. You may join us right here, toll free. 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. We've also got Skype at Skype username LRN.FM. What happened with a cop who lured 60 men to his home? He saved them. At the same time? He saved them. He gave them something. I don't know if you want to call it a save. Uh, We'll explain a little bit more here. In a moment from photographyisnotacrime.com. Great website, by the way. Uh, but also, I want you to know about shop.freetalklive.com. You want to get some shopping done get uh, and help Free Talk Live? This is how you do it. You go to shop.freetalklive.com. You go to the Amazon links there. Uh, if We already talked to you about how you can save big with Bitcoin on Amazon through saveitpurse.com. But uh, if you don't have Bitcoin and you still, you still got to shop, you might as well shop through shop.freetalklive.com because then a nice portion of your purchase will go to Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon through those links. There's also a couple Walmart links there, but nobody ever goes to those. Uh, but they're there for you if you prefer to, you know, maybe something's cheaper on Walmart than Amazon. You can do that too. Do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Exactly. Shop.freetalklive.com to the phones and the fun. Dave in California, you're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Dave. Hey, gentlemen. I do much appreciate your show. I regret. We only get you a few hours. Go ahead. On the North Coast. What were your it's thoughts tonight? Well, I think I, you don't lock in to an ideology so much that you can't explore truth. I like that about the show. I, I, I've come to kind of put a label on myself of being a liberal, but I'm not sure I know what that means anymore. Um, and I'd like to see that discussed more. What really is the words we use of today describing our political viewpoints? I- Most people don't know. They can't describe it. I mean, you can ask people in one sentence, can you describe your political viewpoint? And the average so-called or self-described conservative or liberal probably can't do that, certainly not in one sentence. A libertarian can easily do that in one sentence. Yeah, Oftentimes isn't. they'll say um, that what it isn't, uh, you know, they'll, they'll try to— We're not to. those other guys. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, uh, This just this week, there's this, I've seen on the Facebooks, and, and Bernie Sanders is doing the rounds— out there trying to discuss what a democratic socialist is, because he's uh, supposedly that's what he is, and he's mm-hmm. every, at least it's a closer definition than um, anything else. I mean, at least a democratic socialist. When somebody says they're a democratic socialist, I get what they're saying, um, uh, you know. And as far as Bernie Sanders goes, I may not agree with his politics on most things, but I would still rather see him win the uh, democratic uh, nomination. Mm. Um, I mean, you know, when you're when you're picking between. Clinton and and Biden and and Bernie Sanders. I'd rather feel the burn like anybody else. Is Biden in the race now? Did I that think happen? That supposedly he he uh, like there's. I heard he was going to announce. Soft maybe. announced today. I don't know. Yeah, but he was just on Bill Maher the other day, and he and he was having to sit down. They're like, all right, they're talking. They're saying, hey, we need to educate you people. This is what a democratic socialist is, and they're back and forth. Uh, and I and of course I've seen the memes too uh, uh, this week. So I yeah, no one knows who they are except. I think libertarians and anarchists and voluntarists, because we actually sat down one day and said, hey, what the hell am I? And we actually thought about it. And hey, 
we came to realize I don't want to hurt other people. I don't want to take things from other people to pay for my stuff. It is, that is, that's not fair. That doesn't make sense. A, a libertarian is someone who uh, believe, who does not believe in the use of uh, or advocate the use of force, of aggressive force, to achieve political or social goals. Uh, a voluntarist is someone who believes all human interaction should be based in consent. This is very, very simple stuff. Anyway, uh, Dave, you're welcome to share your co comments. Go ahead. Well, you know, in exploring it, I think I find for sure, and I guess you do too, that uh, Bernie Sanders is certainly a sincere human being, whether or not he's come up with the right answers to it all or not. But I do. Well, he's definitely not him. coming up with the right answers. I mean, the, the right answer is never to use aggressive force against your neighbor to get them to do something you want them to do or to not do something that you don't want them to do. The and right answer is to use persuasive uh, tactics and techniques to uh, persuade people onto your side, but never to use force. And this guy is a career politician, and I'm just going to say, don't trust him. I mean, no you, you can't you can't trust. He's this been guy. doing this long enough that you know what he's going to do. I mean, I don't know what. Maybe what, you do, but the average uh, Bernie fan, a lot of them think that he's some kind of anti-war guy. There's no real evidence for that, or, or an anti-gun guy, or, 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 or a pro-gun guy. I'm sorry, and he's really not. He's all about getting rid of assault weapons. But you know what? His wife, I just found out this week that she is a she's a corrupt fraudster. She got fired from her last job mm -hmm. uh, for embez not embezzling, but for f a fraudstering a lot of money. So I mean, you know, and he the, wants, the, to, go, he the wants Apple, to go after Ed Snowden. The too. apple doesn't fall far from the tree, and you know, so he's married to a uh, corrupt individual. So I'm not. I wouldn't be surprised if uh, if he's got some skeletons in the closet. Dave, thanks for the call tonight. Appreciate it, man. Uh, Tyler's in Washington. You're, that's Washington State. You're on Free Talk Live. Go ahead, Tyler. Hey, what's going on, guys? What's on your mind? Um, I actually wanted to talk about. Uh, well, before I get into that, I do want to agree with Mark on that. Uh, you know, when it comes to Bernie Sanders. I want to feel the burn, too, based on the fact that, like, he's as skeptical of the Fed as any of them out there. And that, that's what makes Didn't he cool. shoot down Ron Paul's bill? Well, he did. And I don't think that he's, he's great because he doesn't believe in competitive currencies. He doesn't believe in a free market, but he is skeptical of the Fed. And that's what makes him less of a statist than, say, you know, the lizard queen Hillary Clinton or Joe Biden or the rest of them. But I still don't like him. I just but, wanted to agree with you on that point. Yeah. All I'm saying is, is I want to see him win the Democratic primary. I think that of the the people that I see running there, that um, and I'm I'm uh, ruling out the the ones that aren't polling at all. Um, I'm just uh, you know talking about the the big three there. Of the big three, he's the one that uh, seems that you know that I would like to see Democrats vote for. I mean, I'm only picking between three people. Right. No, and I agree with you. I think he's the best of the Democrats. That doesn't make him a good candidate. <laughs> right. so, you know, he sucks as much as the rest of them. Uh, I disagree. I, I think Vermin Supreme is the best uh, Democratic candidate, oh, although although he hasn't officially announced yet. It's, he's got to pay $1,000 like to, like, to uh, be a part of the New Hampshire primary, and then I'll uh, consider him a real <laughs> candidate. I, I, do, I, do, I do love his boot. It makes him look very official, the boot on his head. Mm -hmm. um, but what I wanted to talk about with you guys was a post you made on Facebook yesterday. It was a blog post about libertarians and shunning. And I was the one that posted, I said, if this is what you guys were talking about tonight, I'm going to call in tomorrow, and I did. I even I was driving home, and I stopped at a gas station to call you guys because I really wanted to talk about this. Okay, what about it? The thing, well, the thing is, is that I think that the libertarians are kind of, the reason that we struggle so much with the movement is because we don't have a uniform message. And that's the beauty of libertarianism. We don't all agree. And we and we disagree on a lot of things, and we and we're, we're supposed to, you know, because we don't we don't all believe in a certain you have to do this, you have to do that. We're all free to think what we want, which is great. But one thing that I think that we do not take into account a lot is negative and positive positive social sanction, right? Yep. I think a big part of a liber being a libertarian is that we don't regulate each other, but what we do is we shun bad ideas and we applaud good ones. Now. In, I, I completely agreed with that blog post in that, like, you know, um, there are certain people that we need to, like, disagree with and not let them into the movement. There, How do you not let somebody in the movement? Are, well, and not, not when, I, when I say not let them in the movement, I just mean don't give them their spotlight. Yeah. Um, you know? uh, Mark, how does the alpha ma female wolf prevent the, the, little, the little wolf from mating with her? You they, said, uh, well, bite them, I assume. Keep your legs closed. No, they— well, no, they don't let them eat. Okay. Well, I just don't. Um, I okay. Um, I'm trying to figure out how that might apply in this circumstance. 
You don't well, let them. You don't let them eat. You don't. You don't. You don't put their their blog post all over your uh, your your blog and give them credit and get, you know send them more views, which is what I saw some of the posts were uh, identifying. They say, "Hey, look, you just gave this man more airtime. You should have just ignored him." I don't what know are we what talking, talking about, about here. You talking about the one the post we read last night on the air? Uh, the, this caller is saying he appreciated that post. I was saying I saw. I didn't actually read the post, yeah. but I saw some of the comments, and they were like, "Hey, you just gave this man airtime." If you're really well, gonna, if you're really gonna shun him, I'm not looking to shun, uh, shun him. Uh, look, the the post was. Let me recap briefly. Uh, the post was by Joel Valenzuela. He's mm-hmm. a liberty activist here in New Hampshire, and he was saying that, uh, you know, certain people in Keene are bad because we are not ostracizing people like Chris Cantwell. Uh, and so then we were told that we were bad because we put Joel's post on our blog. Mm-hmm. Which is, of course, the exact same thing people say to us about putting Chris Cantwell's posts on our blog. So once again, you just can't make anyone happy. Uh, stand by, Tyler. We'll let you explain where you're coming from on this now that we've sort of explained uh, the, the backstory a little bit. 855-450-FREE. That's our toll-free number. You can join us here on Free Talk Live. If you expect secure, privacy-oriented services and real human support from your web hosting provider, choose Virtual Space International. From domain names and SSL certificates to offshore banking accounts, Virtual Space International has been the all-in-one, multi-language solution for over 25 years. And satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. We even accept Bitcoin. Find out how to get 50% off for life at SaveTimeHosting.com. Are your kids spending too much time online? Are they gaming instead of doing homework? Are they on Facebook instead of sleeping? Turn their internet access on or off when you want for free at webcurfew.com. 100% web-based interface means nothing to download, install, or configure. Web Curfew is free and controls any device using your home network without slowing down your internet. Block all adult web content with a click of a button. Don't let the internet raise your kids. Take back control of how and when your home internet is used for free. Visit webcurfew.com. So you've got to take a state construction license exam or certification. Can't decide on what books or what chapters to study? Discover right now how you can eliminate unnecessary books and wasted study time. At ContractorExam.com, our study materials zero in on state required test topics in an effective multiple choice format. So whether you're a plumber, electrician, general contractor, or other construction related trade, ContractorExam.com will help get you prepared. Visit us at www.ContractorExam.com today. Hey, Berkey Guy here. Are you still drinking unfiltered tap water? Does your water contain chlorine or fluoride? Will you have drinkable water in an emergency? The Berkey Guy is here to help you remove these and other potential contaminants from your water, thus helping you drink clean, purified water. We offer Berkey water purification systems at the lowest available prices online. Don't go another moment without a Berkey system. Over the last 10 years, we've helped thousands drink clean, purified water. Join them by visiting GoBerkey.com or call me, the Berkey Guy, at 877-886-3653. That's 877-886-3653. Are you making sense to the boomer mindset? I'm Holland Cook from SurvivalSpeech.com. 80 million baby boomers comprise 25% of the population and control most of the USA's wealth. As aging parents pass on, they'll control more. Boomers are 46 to 65 years old and regard themselves as midlife. They identify as neither young nor old. They're post-minivan and pre-retirement. And they don't like being called boomers. They think me. Many of the purchases boomer couples make are individual purposes. They've been experimenters all their lives. If you want their attention, tell stories and keep it simple. If something seems complicated, boomers can dismiss it as, I don't need this. And if you're looking for work, you may be applying to a boomer, so relate accordingly. From survivalspeech.com, I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you tired of governments murdering people around the world? Stop using their money. There is an alternative. Bitcoin is a stateless free market non-political currency. Bitcoin cannot be inflated or controlled by any government. 
By using their money, you are helping the state. Stop doing it. You have an incredible alternative available now. Learn it, use it, spread it. Get started with Bitcoin at Bitcoin.com. That's Bitcoin.com. You can connect with the Liberty Radio Network via our Facebook page at Facebook.LRN.FM. That's Facebook.LRN.FM. Free Talk Live. Join us now. The number 855-450-FREE, 855-450-3733. Uh, with you in the studio, it's Ian here. And Conan. And Mark. And if you like Free Talk Live and you want to get behind the show, then become an amplifier. The AMP program is over at amp.freetalklive.com. It stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. And it's five bucks a month. We'll take that money into the show and invest it into Free Talk Live so we can bring Free Talk Live to more radio stations all around the country. Bring new internet listeners on board, expand our satellite footprint, and expose new people to the ideas of freedom because, gosh darn it, that's worth something. And if it's worth five bucks a month to you, what we're doing here, then please get behind the show at amp.freetalklive.com. It's a huge help to us uh, when you do this. It also gives you access to special perks like the very cool Free Talk Live AMP, uh, the AMP Facebook group, which is really... You know, you never know about these Facebook groups. Sometimes you create it, add some people to it, and then they never talk. But the uh, the Facebook group for the amplifiers is always busy. There's new posts in there, I would say, every sure day. Is. Every single day, which is really cool. So it's lively. Uh, there's that and other perks, including the Amp Only podcast. So go to AMP, A-M-P, amp.freetalklive.com. And get signed up using any major credit card uh, through PayPal, as well as Visa and MasterCard. And coming soon... A new way to pay for AMP. I will not say what that is going to be. It's going to be exciting. But I'm excited about it, and hopefully you will be too. But stay tuned for that. Let's go back to Tyler listening in Washington. He was calling about an article that we shared yesterday on the show, and it was about us darn Keniacs not being choosy enough with our friends and our uh, fellow activists, and uh, that we should ostracize Completely people like Chris Canwell, who, by the way, has been kicked off of Free Talk Live because one of his viewpoints didn't jive with the message that we want to portray here on Free Talk Live. But that doesn't mean that I'm not still friends with Chris. In fact, he and I went out and played some darts last night, as a matter of fact. And uh, anyway, Tyler, go ahead with your comments. Okay, well, the thing is, is there's, there's, a, two, there's a two-sided coin to, to social sanctions, right? There's a positive and a negative. And I kind of want to touch on both of them briefly. And what it is is that when it comes to negative sanctions, there are certain people within the group that, you know, and, you know, I agree with Mark, they should be in the group, but I also agree with Conan that, you know, don't always let them drink from the well. And those are, you know, the, the kind of the crazies, the conspiracy theorists, the racists and stuff that, like, you know, in a libertarian society, yes, you should be able to freely have those ideas and and feel how you want. Like, if you own a business and you're a racist, if you don't want to serve someone based on the race, fine. But you're going to lose business, and you might go out of business because of it. Those people, though, they negatively hurt the movement because people on the outside, sometimes they'll look at those people and they'll think, you know, oh, that's what they all are. They're just going to group us yeah, all Yeah, that's together. true. But the one thing you can't do is control who's in your movement. You can't do that. If somebody goes on the air and says they're a racist and then in the next breath says they're a libertarian, well, you can't stop them from doing that unless you, you know, you know they're on their own show. They're out there in, in public making claims. There's this guy, uh, Sol Invictus in Florida, who's like this blood drinking uh, pagan, apparently. And, uh, and you know, he's he not claims, doing much good for the movement. You know, <laughs> he, he's... Uh, <laughs> That's causing controversy. The Libertarian Party, in that case, if there uh, was ever a lizard politician, he he's, he just takes the cake. But my point being, you know, if if you have a movement, once it grows large enough, you can't control who shows up. Perfect example of this is the 420 celebrations that happened here back in 2009 uh, in Keene, where we had over 130 people in Central Square, many of whom were smoking cannabis openly. And you don't know who those hundred, you know, I know, I might have known 20 out of the 130 people in, in that square. And if somebody started doing something stupid or dangerous, all I can do about it is talk to them and say, hey, can you cut that out, please? And maybe give them some reasons why they should stop. But if they, in, they continue to uh, do what they're doing, I can't do anything about it. I'm in a public place. 
at a public event, and the public, which includes crazies, racists, losers, you know, homophobes, whoever, can show up. And all I can do is just right. speak out against it. But that's my that's my biggest point right there is talking to them. Now, the libertarian mindset says you should allow anyone to say what they want, and you should also agree they have a right to say it. But the biggest thing is that I think that we don't do a good job of shutting in that if somebody does make a sexist comment or does say, say a racist comment, as libertarians, we, we usually go, well, that's your right to say it. You're, you, you know, you know what, you can have your idea or whatever, but we don't. That's not what I say. Yeah, I don't think I'll that'll call him out. That I'll doesn't happen anywhere that I know of. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll call him out. That's not a, that's not the right thing to say. That's not appropriate. That's rude. I'll have a conversation with that person. But thing is, the people who don't like where where we're come, where many of us come from in Keene, uh, you know, the, the liberty activists here is they that we aren't shunning enough. They say that we're not ostracizing enough. The fact that we're having conversations with people and trying to come to common ground and trying to you know, I want to I want to set a good example for people. Because you know well, people do have Angel, issues. What about, what about when you? What about when you burned the American flag or you put? You didn't I didn't burn do it. that. You posted the video. Oh, you did. Yeah, I did not okay, burn the American you, flag. Oh, you did not. Okay, but you you post you posted a video um, of people burning an American flag. I have done that. And yes. You, right, and you and you have and you have like supported the idea behind it. Now, okay, somebody who is prior service, when I look at that. A lot, the thing about the American flag and the burning it, and the, the controversy that it causes, is that there's so much ambiguity with the meaning of burning the flag. Yeah, I understand. Sure. Now, some people, right? So when you burn the flag, you are burning um, something that represents the the status, foundation, the establishment. But other people see it as you're burning something that represents the people of this nation. Sure, I get that. Now, when it, when that as somebody who's prior service, I know a lot of people in the military who are libertarians, who joined and they see the negative aspects of socialism because military is the biggest form of socialism in America today. And they realize the negative aspects. And those people would be very, very susceptible to joining the liberty movement. But then they see things like that and they think, well, shoot, these guys are just a bunch of crazy extremists and I don't want to be part of that because they're burning something that I – but you can say that about all it. kinds of different activism. There are people who will say that, oh, you guys shouldn't do Robin Hooding, which is filling expired meters in front of the, the meter maids. You shouldn't do Robin Hooding because, you know, that'll upset some people. And it does upset some people. Some people are upset by the fact that, you know, we're challenging the status quo, that we're out there doing these Your things. Your single example really isn't uh, serving here. The fact is, is that they will say it about everything that's what i'm saying you do not just some things but everything right. that well, uh, anything that has an impact anything that's visible anything where you're taking a strong position on some sort of issue it's going to piss somebody off and and people seem to think that it's only the keen activists in new hampshire who are going to upset people because we're just so rude or whatever and it's ridiculous uh there's we talked about uh, the uber driver christopher david who is illegally driving for uber well guess what he's making enemies in that town why is he making enemies in Portsmouth? Because he's taking a position. He's taking action. He's doing civil disobedience he's in this case. He's standing up for himself. He's standing up for himself and the freedom to do business and the free and all the other Uber drivers and passengers. And you know who hates him? The taxi cabbies and all the bosses of the taxi cabbies. They all hate him. And you better believe that the uh, the families of the taxi cabbies don't like him very much either. And the people that there was a bouncer outside of a bar who snitched on him to the police one night. You better believe that that bouncer doesn't like him. Probably the owner of the bar supports his bouncer because he's probably buddies with the cops or whatever. I mean, hey, look at this guy. He didn't pay his dues. Right. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. I had to pay my dues and this guy is not paying his dues. It's What's not up just with that? that? Not just that. But, you know, they'll also use the excuse that, oh, well, he's not safe. He's got to get government inspected and government registered because then he could be dangerous mm -hmm. and he could be a murderer and, you know, taking people around. So we need the government. And the fact that he's not uh, out there jumping through these government hoops put, is putting us all in danger. This man's a menace to society. You don't think that's going to happen? It's absolutely going to happen. So it doesn't matter what you do, Tyler, but I get where you're coming yeah, from. Yeah, burning the flag is the okay. is the tip. That's bad. It's, the, it's one right. of the more offensive things. Now, I agree that ruffling certain feathers is going to happen, and it's actually kind of important because it does draw attention. I agree with that. But this is the other side. Like I said, a positive and a negative. This is the other side that I'm kind of, you know, like trying to push towards is that like with Rand Paul. Okay, Rand Paul is not a libertarian, but he has libertarian aspects. And yet people within the party do not want to support him because they're kind of purists. And they're like, oh, well, he's not libertarian enough, so I'm not going to support him because, you know. Yeah, he's I'm one not. of those people. I am as well. Right. 
I'm not. I'm going to support him. He's got my vote. How much money did you give him? None of your your business. Zero, right? I've donated to his campaign. (laughs) You have? Okay. I haven't donated. Well, me, I haven't donated to as much as Ron Paul because Ron Paul was the king. Yep, I've donated a lot more to the Ron Paul campaign. Right. Now, the thing is, though, is that the reason I donated to Rand, even though he's not a libertarian, is because it's a positive aspect, right? There's a positive sanction we need to give. And I think that libertarians don't give enough positive sanctions. Now, we do give a certain amount of negative sanctions, like I mentioned, but sometimes we need to push it a little bit harder. But we need to start pushing this more of a mainstream idea rather than like this extremist idea, like with the flag burning. We need to push more of a mainstream idea where it's like, listen, anything that resembles more liberty than what we currently have, why are we not pushing for that even more? I agree with no more flag burning, but no more sp- uh, sending money to federal agents. They're not They're not going to get us out of this crap. The principled people are the ones I want to support because, to me, a political campaign is about spreading the ideas of liberty, and Rand Paul's not doing that. Thanks, Tyler, for your call tonight. Uh, whoever starts doing that, maybe it'll be our own Daryl W. Perry. I'll get behind that person's campaign. Uh, we'll see you tomorrow night. Freetalklive.com. Blake Free Talk Live. It hasn't been unheard of for the police to insert an instigator. These are things they do, believe it or not. They'll have a plainclothes officer go into the protest and act as though he's one of the protesters, and then the plainclothes officer will start something with another one of the police. Oh, come right. on. This sounds like a conspiracy theory now. This is not a conspiracy theory. These are confirmed occurrences. Let's give the cops a benefit of the doubt and say it really was some instigator starting stuff with the cops. Does that mean that it's appropriate to flush every single person out of the park with rubber bullets, tear gas, and other sorts of uh, offensive devices? Doesn't seem like it to me. Would it make yeah. more sense to stop the person who's instigating, to, you know, put a stop to those specific individuals? Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Liberty activists around the country are starting to realize politics alone won't set us free. So what will? At Liberty on the Rocks, we believe the answer starts with living your principles, spreading ideas, and connecting with those around you. By starting a Liberty on the Rocks network, you can make a difference by uniting libertarian thinkers. Find out how much fun it is to build your local network from the ground up. Visit libertyontherocks.org today to get started. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. Rebel Love Show is next, live after the news, here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keene and the Shire, the Liberty Media capital of the world, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Tuesday, October 20th, 2015. Silver is trading at $15.88 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,174 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $269. Antiwar.com reports facing growing condemnation from the international community for their actions in the weeks following their attack on the Doctors Without Borders Hospital in the Afghan city of Kunduz, an attack which killed 22 civilians. The Pentagon has admitted to a Friday incident in which they used an armored vehicle to smash into the bombed hospital, destroying potential evidence. Ironically, the vehicle was there to deliver investigators to the site, and while a Pentagon spokesman conceded they should not have done so, he claimed it was done in the interest of safety. Doctors Without Borders workers were within the hospital at the time, even though it was closed after the U.S. attack. The Pentagon promised to repair the damage caused in the break-in, which is the closest they're likely to ever get to admitting any culpability in anything involving the facility. Exactly how much new damage was done to the already bombed hospital is unclear. But the timing is suspicious, as the smash-in came not long after the White House declared its opposition to an independent investigation into the attack. Doctors Without Borders has suggested 
significant evidence was destroyed during the break-in, which subsequently will not be available if any credible investigation ever does happen. The Pentagon has admitted to knowing that the site was a hospital long before it ordered the attack and confirmed that Doctors Without Borders contacted them when the first strikes happened. Despite this, the U.S. continued the attacks for a solid hour and the Pentagon says it is unclear what happened after the Doctors Without Borders call was made. For over 35 years, Roberts & Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment-grade precious metals. They also take Bitcoin for precious metal purchases and permanently removed the minimum purchase order for all orders paid in the digital currency. Call Roberts & Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing and a forward-thinking approach to new technologies. 850-478-5270 or online at rrbi.co. UPI reports the state of Ohio on Monday postponed all scheduled executions until at least 2017 due to recent difficulties in obtaining the drugs needed to perform lethal injections. Monday's decision marks the latest obstacle in resuming executions in the state, which have already been delayed for two years over the dwindling availability of the needed drugs. The problem is that many compounding pharmacies, which have previously supplied the drugs, are now refusing to sell them to prison officials on legal and ethical grounds. The European Union voted in 2011 to ban the sale of pentobarbital, which had previously been used by prisons, to the United States for use in executions. In January, Ohio officials postponed all executions set for 2015. Monday's announcement means almost half of the 25 inmates on Ohio's death row are receiving a de facto stay of execution, some of whom will remain alive for as many as three years beyond their original execution date. You can support FPP Radio by shopping online. Whether you're looking for precious metals, bitcoins, or books, you'll find that and more at shop.fppradio.com. Every purchase you make from one of my affiliates, like Namecheap and Amazon, at shop.fppradio.com helps fund FPP Radio. Or you can shop directly from FPP with Bitcoin in the Bitcoin store. That's shop.fppradio.com. Reuters reports the Obama administration said on Monday that it would require drone owners to register their unmanned aircraft as part of an effort to curtail rogue drone flights that pose a danger to commercial aircraft and crowded public venues. Transportation Secretary Anthony Fox announced the creation of a task force of private sector and government representatives to craft recommendations for establishing the first ever federal drone registry. The recommendations are due by November 20th, and administration officials hope to have the registry in place before Christmas when they say more than 1 million new drones could be given as gifts to new untrained operators. The registration requirements would also apply to drones already in use. Drone industry representatives welcomed the notion of having a mechanism to promote accountability, but questioned whether a new registry could be in place in such a short time frame and said the government's authority 